Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Rocky Stone Memorial Field here in Moncton, New Brunswick. We are getting ready to kick off the championship in the year 2022 between Moncton Mustangs and St. John Wanderers for the Maritime Football League championship this year. And what's amazing about these two teams is that over the last 20 years that this season has this, this teams these teams have been playing this game. These two teams, one of them has been in the championship at least every time except for four times, actually, that they haven't been here. I'm joined in the booth today with uh, Dave Chappie Chapman. So, Chappie, what are we uh, expecting to see here today? Uh, we should see a pretty good game. It's been a great day here in Moncton. It's been very warm, but uh, the sun's died down a little bit. And uh, just to go on what you were saying about a uh, number of championships, the Wanderers have actually won eight and the Mustangs have actually won seven. So a win today for the Mustangs would actually tie them with the Wanderers for most wins in the MFL. Excellent. So we're getting ready for kickoff here. The referees are just waiting for us. And they're going to give the signal, and we're going to see today that the Wanderers are kicking off to the Mustangs. They'll be kicking on your screen from left to right. Uh, and at the beginning of the, the game today, the Wanderers did win the toss, and they chose to defer to the second half to see what would happen. So we're just waiting here to see what, uh, what, we, uh, what we'll see today. So as we've just uh, highlighted, this teams, these teams have been around for the last uh, 20, 21 years. There's only been one season that wasn't played. That was 2019 because of COVID, of course. Moncton's coming fresh off three, uh, two championships. This will be the third uh, attempt at it in a row. Uh, and the Wanderers won in 18 and 17. So it should be a good tilt today. So we got a kickoff. Little squibber into the middle side. Picked up number 84. Looks like he's got about four yards out of that. Wasn't exactly what everybody's expecting. Uh, looking for a deep kickoff, Chappie. What do you think about that one? Uh, I think it was pretty good. We'll see what happens here. There's a flag on the play. Uh, probably It'll be something first down for the Mustangs. After the fact, I guess. 41. So what we're going to see is we're going to see uh, the Wanderers come out on defense. Mustangs coming out on offense. Looks like it's against the uh, against the Mustangs. Uh, looks like it's going to go back at least. Objectionable conduct against the Mustangs. We're hearing objectionable Maybe conduct. Yeah. Is the call. Yeah. So that's going to put them back starting on the 31-yard line deep in their own territory. Uh, the two had, the two meetings that they've had so far this season. What were the uh, what were the outcomes of that, Chappie? I believe the Mustangs have won. Uh, 40 something to 12. I'm not exactly sure. I think it might have been 46 to 12. So we got Patry in the in the shotgun, hands it off, gives it up to number 20 Fogarty as a tailback, and he gets uh, a good hard fought five yards on the right hand side. There. Oh yeah, that's a hard five for Caleb Fogarty. He's uh, second year, I believe, at a Saint FX. He's uh, very very fast, very fast cuts as well. He's a great little Caleb running Fogarty back. On the carry. So you see they set off with the uh, tailback to the quarterback's left and you come cut hard to the right, uh, trying to get the Wanderers to step hard to the first action, of course. So Mustangs broke the huddle. They're coming up to the line. They got Patry back again in uh, shotgun. We got two wideouts. A little bit of motion before the snap. Again, hands it off. Fogarty cuts it back to the right. And he gets up, gets a nice 10 yards out of that. He's up to the 45-yard line. Yeah, that was a really nice run up the middle by Fogarty. Kevin Fogarty on the carry. That's good for a Mustangs first down. So Fogarty's a starting tailback. Uh, it looks like uh, Mustangs uh, favor the uh, shotgun set. Uh, do they uh, move much into uh, other sets? Uh, uh, it's mostly shotgun in this as it uh, sets up for the run game in the pass as well. Uh, Dan Comfort is another quarterback that's usually played besides David Patriot himself, and they're both great in the, in the sock shotgun position. So again, we're seeing some pre-snap uh, pre motion. Oh, high snap. Gives it back to Fogarty. Fogarty's cut hard to the, to the left. Finds a little bit of... Oh, a little well, bit of an angle. That's a hard fought 10 yards. It looks like a first down from here. Yes, sir. I give him the first. I give him the first, too. It looks like the referee has got his uh, toe firmly on the white line, which moves the, yeah, moves the six out. The carry. Good for another Mustangs first down. So it's nice to see them be able to pull that ball down to the air like that and still get the ball off. Yeah. Uh, this offensive line, they have gone from coaching each other to playing together. Uh, some of them are coaches at Moncton High. Some of them are graduated players. It's just a very tight bond on that offense. Nice. So pre-snap motion again. Nice pass. Out to, oh, dropped it. Looked like it was in and out of his hands. Looked like it was LeBlanc, 87 perhaps. That'll bring up second down. Uh, I thought I had number 80. Yeah, it was Guimont, sorry. My eyes aren't what they used to be. <laughs> That's all right. So it was a quick little pass out to the uh, flats on the right-hand side of, uh, the comp of, the, of Fogarty. Or not Fogarty, of uh, Patriot. Sorry, my mistake. Now, typically, we see when quarterbacks are sitting up here on the left hash and the right-handed, they, they like to get those uh, wider passes. So we'll yeah. see what happens here. 
A little play action, gets it off to, to the H-back it looks like. Picks up two yards out of it, it's gonna bring up uh, third and long. So we'll see what the Mustangs decide to do here. Yeah, it looks like the referees are only giving them about one on that. Pass complete to so Josh third and nine. Will be third and nine. It's a warm day today. It's nice to see the city of Moncton finally break 30, 30 degrees, but uh, it's a little tough on the guys out on the, on the field, of course. Oh yes, prior to the MFL championship, the WMFL Women's League actually had their championship prior to, and it was very hot for about three hours. So another nice pass into the soft zone area. Easily gets the first down out of it. Still trying to fight for another couple of yards. And if I'm not mistaken, that in fact was Demon again. Yep. That's Brett. Him and his brother have both played for the Mustangs over the years. That's good for a Mustangs first down. So the Mustangs are on a nice little, uh, a nice little walk down the field here. Hard fought yards on a couple of the run plays, uh, but it looks like they've got uh, their skills uh, well in hand. So they're coming up to the line here again. Shotgun, Patrick's uh, deep, five yards deep off the line. Pre-snap motion, gives it to the H-back. Nice little cut through the middle. He's still de deacon left and right. Picks up a nice 14-yard gain there. That looked like that was at 87. LeBlanc. Yeah, that, that was Ryan on the on the play there. That's the great thing about the Mustangs' offense. Their their running game just goes deep. Right they must have about carry. three or four running backs and then receivers that can That's jump in and play. Well. It's just out. unreal their run game. It's great when a team is able to balance out both sides of the of, of the play. So passing and running keeps that defense on on their heels a little bit. Very much so. So again, sta still staying with the shotgun. Single back, two, ha two uh, slots, and a quick little pitch. 84 is guided around the edge. He's looking for that couple of yards to get outside. He can't quite get there, and he's out of bounds. That's Looks like uh, he only picked up one, one yard out of that. Yeah, that's Josh Hicks out of Mount A. I believe he's graduated from there, and now he's come to play for us. He's quite the receiver at Mount A. Josh it's nice to see as many of the uh, university the players come and play in the senior league. Uh, it wasn't always the case that way, but uh, it looks like a lot of the guys are coming back after they've either finished or, or they're trying to pick up their skills, eh? getting ready for the Yeah, it's, it's great. You see a lot of the kids coming out of high school before they go to university. They come here to get their reps against some bigger guys, and it's great having them here. So we've got three receivers set up to the left. Full house to the left. He's got all kinds of levels of receivers. Going to the end zone, and he's caught a touchdown. Looks like that was number 84. That was Josh Hicks, Hicks again, yes. He found that soft spot right behind the defenders. It was, it was uh, interesting to see how uh, Mustang set that up. They were playing balance throughout this entire march down the field. So we're gonna take this, take another look at this on the screen and we'll see Patry will take the ball, steps back. He's looking to his left the whole way. Nice soft pass right over the middle. Two defenders just caught looking. Yeah, Hicks just got in behind them and all the quarterback had to do was put the ball in his hands. So going for the extra point. These things are never given, of course. You've got to earn them. And the kick is up. And... Ben George's kick is good. That brings a score to the Mustangs. All right, so we saw the one point. Didn't look like it from here. So it looked like it was a little off the side. So who kicked that? Was that Jamie Glantz? Uh, I believe that was Ben George, number 17. Oh, Ben George, yes, from Ruby High School originally. He's playing at Acadia. Now, yes, not. he is, yes. Yeah, he's, uh, I believe he's third or fourth year at Acadia now. He's actually been one guy that's returned every year, and Acadia has given them his or their blessing to come and play for us as our kicker, and we're glad to have him. Excellent. He's got uh, quite the foot on him. So he'll be kicking off, of course, in Canadian ball, and especially at these levels. If you're a kicker, you're a kicker. You kick all types of, Canadian, all of the game. Canadian football, that, the special teams and the kicking game is huge. So what we're seeing is we see uh, two returners deep for the, for, um, uh, the Wanderers. Uh, into their own end zone. They're giving a significant amount of respect to Ben George and the leg that he does have. Well, with the way the wind's going, it wouldn't surprise me if Ben could tap it through that end zone for the, the one point. He's got some nice air on it, deep into the end zone, and it is caught. Ooh. He's gonna try to bring it out, he is. All he's gotta do is get to the one yard line, yeah. then he's gonna come out, and he's up to the five, nine, eight, come out at the nine yard line. And that was number 87 for the Wanderers. Number 87 for the Wanderers, Aiden Keith. So Keith is also a wide receiver, which is not unusual, right? We see nope. Uh, nope, typically those uh, uh, returner guys are the uh, wide outs and the, the tight ends and that sort of thing of the game. Yes, the speed. 
speedy guys. So we're expecting to see number 12, Cassidy. And here's another look on that kickoff. A nice deep kick over their head. Bounces at least five, six yards into the end zone. Uh, Keith picks it up pretty quick, though, and comes out. And all he's got to do is get out to the one-yard line to at least get to the 10. So that's why they are setting the ball up at the 10-yard line. Yeah, that wasn't far off from being a rouge. So Wanderers are looking like they've got exactly the same sort of setup as what the Mustangs came out with. They were sit standing in a shotgun with a tailback. Gives it, comes up the middle, and he's instantly met in the middle of that uh, offensive-defensive line. Gets maybe a half a yard out of that. That looks like that was O'Donnell that ran that ball, and Cassidy's the quarterback. Yes. So we get a man down, number 56. It looks like he might have rolled his ankle. He had a tough time getting up on that ankle. Yeah, John Gray in there on that old line. It, it gets pretty rough in there with them big bodies. So here we see a replay. We'll see if we can see what happens. And he's, you can see 56 right there, and he gets rolled up on by his own running back. And that's what happens sometimes in those inside runs is you get those, those running backs. They hit the ground. They roll up. And unfortunately, they, they cause those offensive linemen to roll their ankles over a little bit. Yeah, like I said, tight spaces with them big guys in there. Some of these guys, you know, over 300 pounds, and they're only playing inches away from each other. So, you know, any, any kind of fall on each other is going to hurt a little bit. Well, it's good to see him get up. Yeah, he's up and moving. He'll come out for at least a play. We'll see if he comes back later on in the game. We'll keep an eye on uh, The first. rules in our amateur football is actually he'll have to sit out for at least three plays. Oh, three plays now. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to allow him the time to walk off before they start the next play. Yeah. So break the huddle, though. The, looks like the Wanderers coming back to the line. We are second in a long nine. We got number 12, Cassidy, in the quarterback spot. We got O'Donnell, number 26, in the tail. We got uh, wide receiver split out left and right, and it looks like we got trips to the left. So let's let's wait and see what happens here. Plays in, movement, balls up. Looking to the outside, number 82 is quickly catching it, quickly hit. Looks like he lost a half a yard. That's McNamee. Yep, that's Logan. It was a nice looking pass, but the uh, Mustangs were definitely on top of it very quick. So we'll see here again on, on the replay. He looks immediately to his left, gets the ball out nice and quick. Nice looking pass, but the DBs there for the Mustangs are quick to jump on it. Yeah, the Mustangs have, uh, once again, more depth, even at that DB position on defense and the backer position as well. So we are third and about five. I misjudged that. I thought that was a loss. He actually picked up five yards there. Quick little give on the inside, immediately hit in the backfield by the Mustangs. I believe it's number four, Zach Terrio. That was a very quick turnaround on that. Here we uh, see it again. Quick little give underneath, number 82. And yeah, yeah number, number four for the Mustangs was, was in there before I think the quarterback knew he was there. That was yep, Zach Terrio. Zach Terrio, yeah. He's been around a number of years. I coached Zach back when he was a, a junior. <laughs> football yes that's he, right he, he played qualified. in the junior team yes yeah. a lot of heart that kid yes very much so we're gonna see the first point of the game uh, we see Mustangs have got Israel Alenga out back a uh, deep uh, to wait for the punt to come his way looks like number one for the Wanderers will be punting that number one is Braden Robinson who's also a wide receiver the snap is up the punt Almost blocked, caught nice and clean by Israel at the 35 yard line. He's backing up a little bit, get to the 30, and he's bouncing around a little bit, still moving, still on his feet. Net gain out of that return is about five yards. Yeah, Israel's another one of them players. He's very versatile. He started our season on offense, and he actually made his way over to the defense because he wanted to play defense instead of scoring all the time. Here we see a replay, number seven for, for Moncton almost blocked at and it was you see he's, uh, Israel starts to run up he's looking for a little bit of light to the outside can't quite find it St decides to try to cut it back sometimes those things work for you but the Wanderers were all over him at the end primarily we'll have to say give credit to number 17 for the Wanderers for uh, stopping that particular run back yeah you give Israel two inches he's gone so here we are Mustangs back on the offense a little bit of pre-snap movement a fake that he gave underneath, gives it to the tailback, and he's still on his feet, and that's a good eight, almost nine yards out of that. I believe that's number 88 we're giving the ball to now. That's uh, Cameron Morley, another Acadia student, a graduate of Moncton High School. 
So that's, that's the nice thing about having a deep bench like uh, both teams actually have, but uh, it's nice to see that they're able to move their plays around, get a few guys that are in there fresh. Here we see a replay, high snap. They're gonna have to settle that down. They faked the little give, give the 88 underneath, and he hard fought nine yards out of that. So here we are, second and one. Free snap move, looking to his left. Ah, oh, the ball just comes off the turf. His intended target was Hicks on the wide left side. So we, we've seen a couple of high snaps there. Um, maybe talk a little bit about uh, what's going on with the, with the um, center, perhaps. The center is Colby Bellavo. He's actually graduating from Moncton High School this year. He's only 17 years old, turning 18, out there playing against grown men. So one might say it could be his nerves, playing in such a high-caliber football game right now. Well, let's see if he can settle it down as the game goes along. We are trips to the right. Pre-snap motion, again, high snap. Gives, gives it to the, in the middle. No, he's still got the ball. Sorry, fool, oh. even me. Deep to the end zone, and touchdown. Caught that. Picks, again, with, yeah. with a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little bit of wanderers in his face. And I got to tell you, I'm watching. Here we go on the, on the replay. So high snap, fakes the give. I thought he had it. Even the cameraman thought he had it. Yeah, and then I... all of a sudden, we come up, and we see the quarterback throwing the ball deep into the end zone. Yeah, I bought the fake as well. I was paying attention to the quarterback. I, I seen Hicks go, but I thought nothing of it because usually Hicks is the type of player you're going to put double and triple coverage on that guy. Surprised they gave him enough room to catch that ball. Well, I mean, it was a good effort to try to defend that. A absolutely. The defensive yeah. back was there. Unfortunately, when those things happen, it's hard to, hard to shake that off sometimes. So we see Ben George out there getting ready to kick the ball again. Everybody's set. The ball is snapped down, up, and it is good. So here we have, we have Moncton now, it's 14 nothing. So the, the uh, sorry, uh, so we see now Moncton is going up by two scores. 14 nothing, uh, six minutes and 22 seconds left in the first quarter. Yeah, we actually just seen uh, the other quarterback, Dan Comfort, run off. He went out to be the holder for special teams. He's actually another quarterback from Mount A. Him and David Patry actually both come from Mount A. Nice. So we'll see if uh, we'll see if uh, if uh, Moncton Mustangs decides to uh, change up their starting uh, starting rotation a little bit as the game goes along. You know what? Over this season, I've seen players play just about any position they'd like to play. Once the Mustangs get in a position, they allow their team to have fun. Like you'll see Denis Dewera, the long snapper, actually come in probably and kick a field goal today. Ah, that would be interesting to see for sure. So we see Ben George. He's lining up to kick off again on the 45 yard line, whistle's blown, ball is up. This one's gonna come down a little quicker than the last one did. Fielded, bobbled a little bit, picked up on the seven yard line. Quick little deke on the left, finding some room inside the middle. That was a nice little return. That was a good 27 yard return. And again by, looks like num number 87. Yes, it was 87 again. That was uh, Aiden Keefe. So let's see if the one, here we see a replay again. It's a nice high kick. It allows the receiver to typically get underneath it and gauge it, let it bounce. And then he takes the ball, puts it away hard. Nice little deke to the right, finds a little lane to the left and gets a good solid 30 yard return out of that. Yeah, yeah, some great moves on that run to return that ball. So we're setting up first and 10 on the 29 yard line. Looks like the Wanderers have pulled the receivers in a little bit tighter. Play action pass, rolling out to his left, looking for his receiver downfield, and there's nobody home. Looks like 82 is his intended target, and McNamee, but he just didn't quite get there in time. Whether he got held up a little bit as he's releasing from the line or not, it's hard to say. Yeah, number seven, Jamie Gallant, was right on his heels, so I think he felt the pressure coming, and I believe Jamie even got in there to get hands on him within the time, time frame without being called for, uh, for a late hit on the quarterback. So we're looking at second and 10 still on the 29 yard line, of course. We'll see what the Wanderers can bring to the field this time. They're spread out a little bit more. Still looking at trips left. So quarterbacks looking at the uh, defense, seeing what the alignment is, calling for the ball. He's looking hard to his left right away. Quick little bubble screen. Oh, in and out of the hands of number one, Brayden Robinson. He's going to wish that he could have that one back. He's even hanging his head saying, what am I thinking there? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough ball to drop when nobody's around you and you drop that thing as Here we, we watch the on the replay. replay. So instantly he's looking hard to his left, 
immediately coming out. It's a bubble screen. Defensive back is well blocked. That could have gone for some decent yardage. Unfortunately, he just didn't, wasn't able to pull it down. Now, we do see that he's injured. It looks like there might have been a hand that slid into his face mask, maybe, when he was getting taken down. It's hard to say. Yeah, being such a warm day here in Moncton, it, it could be a factor of just cramping and dehydration, being unprepared or whatnot for today, coming from St. John, as it's usually a little bit cooler down <laughs> in the, the port city. It's been cooler all over up until today. So we've got a replacement in on the left wide receiver position for the Wanderers. We'll see who that is in just a moment when they break the huddle. So it looks like they're going to the, a balance formation. They get two receivers right, two receivers left, tailback, H-back. Still a shotgun. Oh, bad snap. Is he able to get the ball up? He gets it up and off and almost intercepted. Looking for number 82 on that, McNamee. McNamee seems to be one of their key guys that they're looking to all the time. And that was Israel that we see on the monitor right now that almost had that interception. Israel Alunga. He spent a few years actually at St. Mary's University playing. So Cassidy was a little rushed there, having to pick the ball up off the turf after a bad snap or a bad handle of the snap. And he was just looking for any yellow shirt that looked like it was open. He just couldn't quite get it there. So here we see on the replay. And he b drops that ball down on the turf, but picks it up quick, finds his target, gets it off. He's got a great arm. He's got good instincts. Just unfortunately, the timing was just off by half a second. Yeah, I believe Cassidy is the, the younger of the two quarterbacks that the Wanderers have been running this season. So he is. So we see an onside man for the Wanderers. Let's see what they do with this. It is a short kick. He's going for it hard. I'm not sure whether, and it looks like he could have gotten there. He did get there. Onside yes, man yes. recovered that ball. So the referees are throwing flags because they have to. Yes. They have to take a moment in order to talk to the referee. The referee, the guy in the white hat, is the one that's going to say whether he was onside or not. And in just a moment, he's going to say he was onside. Yes, that's correct. And there he's waving off the flag. Number 13 for the Wanderers. Great play. Nagoya Enoch uh, was able to recover that ball. So we hear, see here on the replay, it was a nice, high, bouncing ball. Mustangs are all sort of, sort of stepping st back from it, not really paying attention to it. And he comes right in hard and grabs the ball. So that's first down for the Wanderers. Now up on the, looks like it's the 44-yard line. Yes. A little early in the game to be seeing trickery like that, but I suppose if you're down 14 nothing, you have to pull it out at some time. What, what do you think, Chap? Uh, I think I would uh, just go for everything today. This, this is a championship game. There's no tomorrow after today. There is no tomorrow. So we see the Wanderers break the huddle. They're coming to the line. They got three receivers left, two receivers right, single back. Still in the shotgun, nice clean snap, looking hard to his right, and the ball just sails over the head of number 82 there, McNamee. And it looks like McNamee really is his number one target. Yeah, he's actually a really good receiver. He's, uh, you know, he's he's been in this league for a bit, and yeah, he's, he's another uh, versatile player on this field. I believe he plays both ways sometimes for the St. John Wanderers as well. I think he usually plays DB as well. Okay, we'll see if he comes on the field for defense as we go along. So again, Wanderers breaking the field. Now they've got uh, four receivers left, or quads left, as we like to call it. We see Cassie looking up and down. We see pre-snap motion, and he's going to give it hard to the right side. A little bit of misdirection on his part. Number 26 is running hard. A good 15, 16 yards. Playing with a little bit of motion there, O'Donnell. Yeah, there's there's been a heated rival rivalry between these two teams for a number of years, which I'm sure you're familiar with, and as it is with any sports team between these two cities. Here we see the replay. Nice hard give to 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 O'Donnell. Switches hands, protects that as he's coming around the outside of the defense, and he knows where the defensive hits are going to come from. Yeah, he had a great block there too by uh, number four, Adam Spiro. So we see the Wanderers come back to the field or come back to the line. They are balanced. We got three and two. Play action to, to the fullback, looking deep, running hard. He's decided to tuck it away. He's going hard. There are flags all over the field. I suspect that where they are, that's probably an offside or, or a procedure, I should say, on, on the part of Wanderers, but we'll see what uh, what's called here. That would be my guess, and that's why Cassidy took off with the ball as well. He knew he had a free play, so he just ran with it. Yeah, so it is offside against the Mustangs. So now what do we do here? You can either just take the five yards, move it up, and, and replay the first down, or take it and be second and two. What would you do there, Chavi? Uh, I'd probably move it up five, redo first. But I believe they're resetting the whole sticks. No, they're just moving no. them up five. No, they moved it up. He's taking...
I'm not sure I understand what's just happened here, how it's first down and only two to go. Yeah, from where they oh, spotted. Oh, no, they're moving the ball back. Okay, there we go. Here okay, we go. <laughs> that makes much more sense. So they're going to go back to the original line of scrimmage from where the ball was snapped. They're going to go up five yards yes. and reset the ball and have it first and five. Yeah, there so we go. got a little confused on where the spot of the ball was. That's why we play the game, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not too often you give eight yards on a penalty. So that was a free play for the Wanderers. They could do whatever they wanted to there, and they knew that they were going to get the ball back five yards up. So that's a, a good heads-up play by Cassie to know that the flags are down and what they're there for. So here we come again back to the line. We are four receivers to the left, one to the right. Look for that little run to the right again, just exactly like that. And this time, unfortunately, O'Donnell only got about a half of a foot. Actually, it looks like he might even have lost a half a foot. We'll see where he gives him for forward progress. No, it's even more than that, unfortunately. It's a good two or three yard loss there. I'm going to say, it looks like he lost about two there. The, the, the D line plus one of the linebackers just swallowed that up. Yeah, it looks like they were trying to pull that uh, backside guard a little bit to try to come around to the outside, number 63, but he ran into one of his own guys and then couldn't get helmets on a defensive yeah. lineman in time. So we see O'Donnell down. That could, uh, that could be troublesome for the Wanderers for sure. And he's up quick. So we'll see what happens as, as the game goes along. Proceeds from today's draw will help support a few of the Moncton Stingrays. Who made He's the hanging on to his thigh, so he might have taken a helmet or a knee into his thigh. He may have pulled it a little bit. He's running pretty good, though, so I'm sure we'll see him out here. Also ask about their raffle ticket for your chance to win a Grey Cup weekend. And they're also selling eat, sleep, football So here we are. We are second and six now. We get the Wanderers coming up to the line. We're in a balanced formation. We've got uh, three receivers to the right. Now we got uh, three receivers to the left. A little bit of motion. Now he's coming back inside a little bit. Cassidy. Oh, bad snap. He just has to fall on it and hope the best. Oh, that that was a loose ball. That was a quick whistle. I got to tell you, if I was the Mustangs right now, I'd be saying, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, you know, at the end of the def at the end of the day, the referees are only human. They make mistakes. I'm I'm a referee myself. So here we see the ball goes up high off his feet. He doesn't have control of the ball. That should have been a live ball. But that's why we play the game and everybody are human and everybody's gonna play the game as best they can. It, look, Jack Kingston, the, the white hat out there, he's been around this game for a long, long time. Number of years. And you know, another reason why they may have blown the whistle is player safety. No one likes to see a kid get hit while he's on the ground trying to recover the ball. Absolutely. So here we are, third and long. We're a good 14 yards. Cassidy's take the ball. He's looking hard to his left. And he, the ball is caught. Number four, he's got it and he's fighting hard. He is close. That looks like that was Spurl that caught that ball in a little bit of traffic. Big mitts out there, grabbed the ball out of the air and was able to get some good positive yards on the ground, the yards after catch. So here we see the replay. Cassie's looking to his right the whole way. He sees his receiver, splits the defenders, yeah, that four was, on four. That was an awesome catch in double, right in the middle of double, double cover. So we've got fourth and uh, a long one or a short two uh, down on the 40 yard line of the Mustangs uh, end of the field. So we are going to see the Wanderers go for it. They are not gonna settle for three points here. They want seven. So they're coming up to the field. They are balanced. They've got uh, three and two. Looks like we got a timeout being called by the Wanderers. Yeah. So that's the first timeout of the half. We're down to a minute four left of the first quarter. Timeout. This is going to be a key point Wanderers. of the game. So given the fact that the Wanderers are down by two scores, we're almost out of the first quarter. This is the first time that they've seen some success moving the ball. What do you think is going through their mind right now? Do they do they want to risk it? Do they want to pass it? Do they want to try to catch the Mustangs sleeping a little bit, thinking it's going to be a hard little run play to get one yard? Are they going deep? What do you think, Chap? I'm guessing they're just going to try and calm down, get their heads together, get in this game, because as we know, the St. John Wanderers are just as just as well of a team as the Moncton Mustangs are, as they have uh, eight championships in the, in the MFL, and the Mustangs only have seven. So these two teams are the titans of this league and have been for a number of years, and I believe... We have yet to see what the Wanderers can produce today. We're, I, I can see us seeing a lot out of them, actually. Yeah, I mean, they've always played them tough. It's always been close games, absolutely. Uh, I always enjoy this part of play calling because all the focus is on the coach, what he's calling, how he's setting it up, what has he done to the game so far, what, is he, what has he put out there. Is he is he trying to is he trying to fool the defense into something? Yeah, right? I, I don't think he's going to show all his cards in the first quarter. <laughs> so we're seeing uh, quads left. I would say we 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 watched a little bit yet. Yeah, pitch to the right. There we go. And he's definitely got the first down. Oh, and yeah. it looks like he's, he's got going. more. And he's, he's going, going to the end zone. And he's had and he's in for the score. That was number ten. 
score in that for the Wanderers, Alex McDonald. So that was a great little play. I mean, what you do is you, you, you set up the defense. You get a cover off the four receivers. So we hear, see here on the replay, four receivers left. They're running hard. Quick little give to the right. Number 10 easily breaks two tackles, squirts through another one, and just hard outruns number seven for the Mustangs, who was there at the very end, didn't give up, but unfortunately it just was a little too little too late, and that was Jamie Gallant. Yeah, I, I think we've seen the Wanderers move the ball around enough that they're finding out that they're a little more successful going up the right side of the field, which they're stomping down right now, as opposed to going to the left side. Well, the defense has to, uh, they have to honor the four receivers, right? So yeah. I mean, when, when you're out there, it's tough to do that. As, as defensive backs and as, as linebackers, you see those four receivers and, and all you're thinking is big gains, big gains, big gains. And then you gotta, you got to watch that. So here we see the kick, number one for the Wanderers. And it's good. So that's Braden Robinson. So now we're down to one score, 14-7. Almost the end of the first quarter. Couldn't ask for a better game than this, right? No, not at all. Like I said uh, just a few moments ago, don't count the Wanderers out yet. We were just up two scores to none, and here it is, a one-score game now. So we'll see what the, what the Mustangs do to answer back into the last minute of the first quarter. Uh, not much of a break between quarters in today's game because of the heat and because of uh, the time of day and everything else. Uh, between the quarters, there won't be a break. They'll just uh, switch uh, ends, and we'll continue on pretty quick. But we'll see what happens here with the kickoff from the Wanderers to the Mustangs. We've got a couple of uh, couple of Mustangs back there looking to uh, field the ball if it comes their way. Looks like it's uh, number seven and number 30, I believe. No, number eight. Yes, it's uh, Tyler Ivany. Ball's up in the air, nice and clean, caught by Guimond, comes up hard, looking first to his left, cycles back to his right, he's got a little bit of room, can he get the wall? No, he gets taken down at the last minute by number eight uh, for the Wanderers, Dom Godro. So it looks like about a seven yard gain on that, uh, on that uh, reception of that kickoff. It'll be first down for the Mustangs on the wrong third. And here we see in the replay, it's a good kick. It's up, fielded nicely. Steps back a little bit. Starts coming hard to his left. Sees all kinds of wanderers and decides to cut back. Looking for the wall on the right-hand side. See if he can pick up some blockers. Squirts past 82, but then picked up at the, at the last minute. So we're still in a shotgun. Quick little give. Quick little run. Tard to the left. He's still running. Still on his feet. Good 15, 20 yards out of that. That's number 88, Cameron Morley. So they, they're certainly going with Morley in, in the last couple of series that we've seen. That's good for a Mustangs first down. So another first down for the Mustangs. Mustangs haven't, haven't had a hard time moving the ball. No, they, they, uh, they move a little bit at a time, but there's, they're moving it. They've yet to turn over today, but... Uh, so this will be the last play of the first quarter. Setting up still in shotgun. Balance formation. Two receivers right, two receivers left. H-back moving slightly. Another give to the left side. Morley's running hard, and another good at 12, 13 yards out of that. We have a couple of flags out deep as well. See how this affects the play. Yeah, typically when you see, when you see flags that deep down, it's like a too many men or something like that. Yeah, that's that would be my guess, because those are very deep on a run play. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it looks like it was too many men. Tapping the top of the hat. So yeah, now the yeah. Mustangs get a chance. They, you don't end a quarter on a penalty, right? So they've got a chance to either replay it or take the, the gain of 12, 13 yards, which is what they're going to do. So that's the end of the first quarter, 14-7 for the Mustangs. We're going to switch ends. So on your TV screen, now you're going to be seeing the Wanderers defending on the right side of your screen, and you're going to see the Mustangs trying to advance from the left side of your screen. It's nice when the uh, quarter ends uh, so close to midfield. It's, uh, it's a pretty quick turnaround. You know what? I'm going to tell you, as an <laughs> official that normally works the sidelines and runs the sticks, there is no easier movement than moving those sticks just 10 yards the opposite way. There you go. So we are first and 10 on the Wanderers end of the field. We're setting up on the 47, 48 yard line. Again, we're in balance formation. H-back number 99 is sitting there just on, on your screen side right now. See a little pre-snap motion. He's looking downfield. Can't find a receiver. He's still looking. Looks for his third or fourth. Oh no, almost picked off. 
Yikes. That ball got away from Patrick just a little bit. He was looking for his first read on the left side of the field down deep, but he was well covered. Look to his second read. He was well covered. Here we see on the replay. So Patrick takes the, the ball. He's looking hard to his left. His receiver can't come open. He tries, and he's looking again, and finally he finds what he thinks is an open receiver, but it just came off his fingers a little much, and that was to number 80 for yeah. the Mustangs. Yeah, the guy that come off the edge, number 44, kind of beat Brandon Caldwell off the edge, uh, the number 99 H-back that we were talking about a few moments ago, and uh, Cameron Morley had to step up and try and grab that block. So here we see had a little give to the middle. 84 is, is taking the ball again, and that was for a very hard-fought three or maybe four yards. I think it's probably closer to three. And we see on the replay here, no real play action, just gives it right to him up the middle. A little hunt play. Number 88, Cam Morley again. And brought down almost immediately at the line of scrimmage. The Wanderers are doing a good job at flowing hard to whatever hole is starting to open up inside. Inside the tackles, they seem to be pretty good clogging that up. It's the outside edge that the Mustang seems to be able to take. Again, I give up the middle, trying to get that middle that middle gap between the A and the B gap, the A or B gap, and it just wasn't there again. And I believe we just seen our third Mustang quarterback of the day, number 25. Uh, you see here on the replay. Javier Reyes Landry. Yeah, number 25, you're right. Yep. So that's the third running back in there for, for the game today. I uh, believe he's graduating from Sackville. I believe he's going to play at Dow this fall in the AFL. Oh, nice. So we are fourth and six. We're sitting firmly on the 43 and a half yard line. Looks like uh, Ben George is lining up for a field goal attempt. Yes, it does. Ball is down, ball is up. Looks like it's got the distance, but it no, it just fell a yard short. Unfortunately, Ben George did, didn't, didn't get that. So number one for the Wanderers, he's got the ball. He's got some legs underneath him. That's gonna be a high tackle easily. Where's the flags on that? I didn't see any flags. Okay, well, that was a nice little run back. Good heads up play by number one, Braden Robinson. Here we see on the replay. So in Canadian football, the ball is still live unless it actually splits the uprights. So number one comes up hard, sees that hit the turf, grabs it in the air, and he's got eyes downfield, and off he goes to the races. He splits a couple of defenders early, finds some open field, gets a very nice return, and, and bring, brings it up almost to the line of scrimmage that the Mustangs just uh, just kicked it from. And there was also Ben George that made the tackle on the play. And kickers don't like it when they don't make those field goal attempts and somebody's running the ball back, right? Ben does not like it at all. <laughs> So let's see what happens here. So Mustangs were stopped on that drive. Wanderers have a chance to now drive down the field and maybe tie up this game. So we're seeing a balance formation. Uh, no, we're seeing trips right, actually. Ball's up nice and smart. Ball's in the air, 15, catch. Oh, almost knocked out of his hands. Great defensive play by the Mustangs. Number 14, Wesley Riley. It was a fantastic defensive play on his part to knock that out of the hands of number 15 for the Wanderers, here we see on the replay. It was a nice ball, good pass, right into his hands, and just knocked right out. So that was number 15 seal that was the intended, intended target, and that would have been a very nice first down for the, for the Wanderers. So instead we're second and 10. So we're looking at another, looks like we're looking at quads right now. Only a single receiver on the line on the left-hand side. Quick little pitch. Didn't quite get the edge that he was hoping for there. And again, that was a pitch to O'Donnell. So he's back in. Of course, his leg injury wasn't uh, wasn't as significant as what it might have appeared. Yeah, it looks like they lost a couple yards on the play as well. Here we see on the replay. It was an instant, it was an instant uh, pitch out. Number one for the for the Mustangs was there immediately. And uh, certainly uh, played into that. That was yes. Zach Cormier. Zach Cormier, the defensive end, yeah. He read that perfectly. It's, it's tough as a defensive end, right? You're coming in hard on the outside. You're, you've got eyes, big eyes for the quarterback. All you're looking at is for that sack in the background. All of a sudden, you got to switch gears. So we're tightening up a little bit. Receivers are in real tight. Play action. Rolling out to his left. Looking downfield. Has a receiver. Oh, oh, picked, but it was out of, out of bounds. bounds. That's Wesley Riley again. He's having a heck of a game all of a sudden in this series. He's the man on the job. I'll tell you one thing. These these young kids, when they come to play and they start playing, they just 
get better and better every play. It's unreal. The Here way we see the replay. Card roll out. It looked like he had his man downfield. He thought he had a guy and he, he whipped it, but just last second, Riley steps in. And it looked like his intended target was 82 there for the, for the Wanderers. So we're fourth and 11. I think we're going to have to punt at this point. Uh, I think it'd be safe call to say that. Uh, one thing we've seen from St. John a lot this year is they've actually preferred to throw the ball a lot more as opposed to running it in prior years. Okay. So we see number one, it looks like, sitting at, at the, the punter position. Here we got Israel in the backfield. So one is kicking to, uh, no, 11, I guess. And Israel catches it clean, looking to his right, trying to find a little bit of room. He's immediately met by a couple of wanderers. First one on, on site was number 22, John Corsicadden. It'll be first down for the Mustangs. So here we see on the replay. A little bit of a high snap, but good, well handled well. Get the ball off, nice punt. Deep downfield, Israel fields it clean. He's looking downfield, deeks a little bit to the right, comes back to the middle again, and he's immediately met by three wanders. They got downfield very quick. So we are first and 10 on the 41 yard line for the Mustangs. And they're coming out of their huddle. They have got uh, three receivers right, two receivers left. A little bit of pre-snap motion coming back to a more tight position. Nice little run up the middle. Number 20 it looks like now. Caleb, Fogarty's back in. Caleb Fogarty again, yep. That was a quick, quick little knife through the middle, more of a search play, I guess. So we see here on the replay. Just immediately into his hands, and he's looking for the open hole. So when, when you're running a search play like that, the tailback is told, look, you, you, you come hard to the line, and then yeah. you gauge where it's starting to open. So you'll see some zone blocking sometimes from the offensive linemen. They're picking a, they're picking a, a big guy that can move and just yep. open up a lane, right? Yeah, I've, I've spoken with Caleb before, and he, he's the type of kid. He says he, uh, he sees things in advance, and it almost slows down for him so he can read his blocks and when to make his cuts. Nice. So we see a little give and go here a bet again to Caleb. Running hard to the outside, easily picks up 15 yards out of that. See a whole lot of pre-snap motion there in, in, in this case. So the Mustangs came out balanced. They sent their, their two inside receivers in opposite directions. And then right at the snap, fakes the, the give to 87. Gives it instead to number 20, Fogarty, who finds the edge and picks up a nice 12, 13 yards out of that run. Steps out, avoids the tackle. So Mustangs seem to have their, their mojo back a little bit. So we're sitting here looking at four receivers left, or three receivers left, two right. Same action as last time. This time pass over the middle. And looks like a nice first down is picked up by number 82 of the Mustangs. Josh McDonald. We see on the replay here, we see the same sort of motion, 87 coming hard, faking it, but immediately Patry is just standing up tall, looking over top of the defense and finds his man running over the middle. Those are tough, tough routes to run. So we see the Mustangs breaking the, the huddle again, three receivers left, a little pre-snap motion coming in tight, two receivers right. This time he gives it again to Caleb. Caleb tries to find some daylight and is immediately met in the hole by number 22 of the Wanderers. And that is uh, John Corsicaden again. So we see on the replay, immediately met at the line. Corsicaden's not having any of it. And he was actually tied up a little bit and the blocker slipped off him to pick up what he thought was a bigger risk, apparently. Yeah, it's not too often you see uh, number 69, Jamie. Jamie Ward loses a block like that. He's a very big fella. So we're seeing Rivio still in the shotgun. Three receivers left, two right. Looking deep downfield. He's got his man over the middle. Looking into the end zone and in his hands. And it's a touchdown. That's number eight, uh, Tyler Ivany. So he came out of the slot position on the left-hand side. Just did a, a deep post is all that was. Uh, but it looks like uh, Patrick... Uh, Patry had his eyes on him the whole way. So we see here on the replay, Patry is, he looked a little bit to his right, but he's, he's waiting, all he's waiting for Ivany to open up. Gets his hands out in front of him. A little bobbled catch, but wow. The hands on that kid, he held on to that thing. Great concentration to pull that in. Ben George is now looking for a little bit of a- uh, Redemption, I guess. <laughs> redemption to get this extra point. Can't blame him, 45 yard attempt at a field goal. Come on now. So there we go, the extra point is good. And he also cleared the scoreboard in the end zone here at Rocky Stone Field. So somebody's gonna have to go looking for that ball <laughs> in, the, in those trees. 
So we're looking now at 21-7 for the Moncton Mustangs over the St. John Wanderers here in the championship game for 2022 of the Maritime Football League. Deep into the second uh, quarter so far, we've got eight minutes and 18 seconds left until half. Uh, we've seen basically the Mustangs have controlled the, the pace of the game. Uh, they allowed the, the, the Wanderers uh, into the end zone on I wouldn't call it a trick play, but it was certainly a fourth down play, and everybody was expecting maybe an up-the-gut run. Yeah. Uh, they overpowered one side with receivers, came hard to the right side, got that open field, got that touchdown. But really, that's it. Hey, right? that's football, though, right? That's how you score. you got to strategize and learn how to read your opponent and pick them apart and figure out the teams and get in there. So we see Ben George is going to be kicking this ball off again, and he's coming hard at the ball, set up on the 45, drops down on about the 10, seven yard line picked up run back hard he's got some room he's looking like he's trying to get the left side but mustangs closing around him hard right on the 20 yard line so picked up the ball in the seven ran it back to 20 good 13 yard gain out of that that return so here we see the replay nice long low drive doesn't give the doesn't give the mustangs a whole lot of time to downfield when the ball is that low right yeah so 87 for the for the wanderers picks up the ball runs it back nice clean hands and that's keith yeah, in the prior meeting this season against the Wanderers, we've seen kicks come loose down towards the end zone, and that's actually how the Mustangs scored a couple times on special teams against the Wanderers in their regular season matchup. So we see the Wanderers break the huddle. They're looking, they've got to try to get another score in here before the end of the half. Still in the shotgun. Three receivers left, two receivers right. He's just looking downfield. He's got a man open over the middle. He wasn't looking for the ball, though. It looks like he was coming hard to a spot on the field. He just wasn't there. We got an injured Mustang down on the field. So that was number 12 that we see on the replay. Releases from the right side of the field. Quarterback watches him all the way down the field, but he just didn't quite get there. And, and it looked like he saw the, the, the defenders there. The defenders did a good job of boxing him out of his route, which is completely good defensive play on their part and keeps him away from that part of the field. So he just wasn't able to come back to where the ball was, was, was headed towards. To yeah, that was great coverage. So we've got an injured, uh, an injured Mustang making his way off the field. He's under his own power, so he should be good. And we're seeing uh, the Wanderers break the huddle and coming back to the line of field. Yeah, I believe the Mustang that just walked off was uh, number 96, Ben Dunson. So we're looking at uh, three receivers left, two receivers right. Pass play again. Number one. Oh, he's instantly grabbed right after he gets the ball. Looks like a little bubble screen to number one. <laughs> I believe that was Chris Brown with the tackle on the play. And here we see the, the replay. Braden Robinson is, is the target. When we say a bubble screen, what we're talking about is the other receiver set out to try to block and keep the defenders off, and they, they throw to a receiver behind them. In this case, unfortunately, number 15 for the Wanderers just wasn't able to keep that uh, keep that block, so that was sealed. that lost that block. Funny fact about number 23, Chris Brown, he never played high school football. He only started playing flag football as an adult and then tried out here in the MFL, and here he is. Well, good for him. So we're seeing a pre-snap movement a little bit. Pass again. Some good pressure by the Mustangs. Forces him out of the pocket. Tries to throw on the run and misses an intended outlet receiver in the form of Keefe. And now we're going to be bringing up, looks like, uh, fourth, down. fourth down. Yeah, that Mustangs D-line just got in there. Yeah, they flushed him out of his pocket hard. And he was just running, trying to find an open receiver, trying to get at least some positive yards out of it. But there's just no way that was going to happen. Well, not every broken play can be fixed. So we're seeing uh, a mass substitution, of course, on the field. We're going to bring out special team as far as a punt unit. Uh, now, one thing many people at home may or may not be aware of is it's, it does take specialized people to do specialized roles on the field. So when we're talking about things like punt team, we see a lot of substitution coming out. Yes, and it's uh, one of the times they will stop the clock whenever, whenever there's a mass substitution like that because it is a very important part of the Canadian football game. So Braden Robinson is punting to Israel. It looks like he's going to just be a high sky ball. Israel still catches it and then steps it bound immediately. Looks like we're at about the 44-yard line. So nice handling of the ball on the end zone. Here we see the replay. Number one handles a snap. Skies the ball really high. All kinds of time for everybody to get downfield to cover it, but it just doesn't get downfield. 
Davis. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the, the punter back there felt the pressure of the, the line coming through. I believe uh, Brandon Caldwell and another fellow were just inches away from blocking that kick. Yeah, I mean, look, the fact matter is when you get the, the team that far downfield, you, you send all the pressure up the middle, right? You're trying yeah. to block that punt. That's, that's the yeah, if you thing. can recover it in that end zone, by all means. <laughs> so we see the Mustangs broke the huddle. They're at the line. They're still in a balanced formation, two and two. Quick little give to number 20 again. Finds that search play, finds that spot. Flag comes out, probably holding, I would say, against the uh, Mustangs. Yeah, the, the umpire is indicating a holding against the Mustangs. That was Fogarty again. Fogarty's the workhorse, obviously, for Moncton. He's going to sub out right now. Looks like we're bringing in number 88, is it? Into the backfield? Uh, that would be my guess. Yeah, Cam Morley. Yeah. Which is a name we have said once or twice already on this. Uh, yeah, Cam's been with us for a number of years. I believe he came to us first in 2017 or 2018. He came to us once he graduated from Moncton High and on his way to Acadia to get reps. And I believe in 2019, he either won, it was the offensive MB MVP or the, the league MVP for the, the Maritime Championship itself. Nice. So here we are, uh, Mustangs broke the field, it's, or the huddle, it is a first and 20 after the holding play. 88, Cam Morley's got the ball. Again, it's a quick little knifing search play. Takes it from the, the quarterback, runs it hard to the left side of the offensive line, looking for a hole. Here we see on the replay. Shotgun, just a quick little give. Now, you notice that Patry is actually holding onto that ball for a minute. So what we're seeing is we're seeing them set up a little bit of a play action. Yep. We're seeing them set up a little bit of an option play. So obviously the coaching staff of the Mustangs puts a lot of, a yeah. lot of faith in Patry to be able to read the defense. I, I believe we'll see some more RPOs as the game goes on. So again, we're sitting in shotgun. Patry, the quarterback, takes the ball. Quick little give. Didn't fake it that time. Caleb is right up. Gets a good five or six yards out of that. Close to eight yards, actually, but still, it's not enough for a first down. That holding penalty really put uh, the Mustangs on their heels a little bit. Here we see the uh, the replay. Instant give, hard to the right side. Nice off tackle run. Met immediately as he gets into the defensive backfield by number 21 out there for Alex McGarvey. Alex McGarvey. McGarvey's a name that I've heard a few, a few times out of the Mustangs yeah. over the last 20 years. <laughs> McGarvey's been with the W for a while, and I believe the family's been working with the W for a while as well. That's right. So we're seeing uh, four receivers left. Quick little pre-snap motion. There's that RPO. Now he's, he's rolling hard to his right. Caught. Pass is caught by number 84, and he's still on his feet. Josh Hicks. After catch. Josh Hicks. Josh Hicks, and it's a touchdown, touchdown. everybody. That comes out of the 44-yard line. Or four, no, sorry, 42-yard line, 37-yard line. Let me look at the field and put my glasses on. Let's just watch this replay. So that was that was a beautiful little play by 84. Oh. Nice little drop his shoulder. Rolls off number eight for the Wanderers. Trying to make the tackle there. Dom it's, McGoudreau. Oh, he, he, he was doing the gertie there. I believe the kids call that the, the gertie. <laughs> the Fortnite celly dance. So oh, here's a play you're going to want to watch. All right. So we're, we're, we're looking at, what are we looking at here? Why don't you tell us? Uh, it's it's just your uh, offset team like you got uh, everyone lined up on one side and you got guys wide open and the center just caught the pass Eddie. That's that's number 45 the need to wear on the long snapper the pride of Skaduk right there the pride of Skaduk So that's that's a fun little play To pull up a, a it's, two point. It's just one of those conversion. things that I told you like the Mustangs like they're they're not golden they're not the best in the world but they have enough depth right now that they can go out there and have some fun and and with the score like it is hey let's just keep having fun right because that's what this sport's about both teams are here to have fun even the referees are here to have fun to be honest with you that's right like i'm, I'm up here having fun with you today jeff <laughs> well normally i'm running around down there taking pictures working my butt off but today i get to have more fun up here and nobody's getting paid at the end of this it, it really is it's all about fun it's about guys yes. that love the game that are passionate about the game that have got desire to play the game at, at, at a good professional or at least professionally played level well some of us would actually like to call this semi-pro i know in canada we're not ranked on any of the tier ratings or anything because i believe on the east coast we're very underrated but hopefully in the years to come we can change that but if we keep playing good quality ball for sure so the kickoff goes deep line drive mustangs can't get down to, to cover very well still on his feet brings it all the way out to the 41 42 yard line that was a great return by, by the uh, Wanderers right there, number 87. Yeah, Aiden Keefe. Yeah, we've seen him all day. 
there was a line drive, and when, when we say that a line drive, it's down on low, and it doesn't give enough time for the for the Mustangs to get downfield and, and set up any sort of defensive wall in order to take him down early. So he gets a, a good head of steam up. Yeah, he takes it all the way to the 42 yard line. He got them them wheels turning very quick, very fast, and was able to pick up quite a few yards before even getting into contact. So we're at three minutes and 52 seconds and counting in the second quarter, heading towards the halftime, down 29-7. Wanderers are taking the ball. They've got three receivers left, one, two receivers right. Looking hard to his right side. Passes off, caught for a good four-yard gain. But that's about it. The, the Mustangs just swallowed him up after that. Here we see on the replay. He's looking hard to his left the whole or to his right the whole time. Nice little pass. pass. Joel gets it off. So Joel Seal gets the ball down. for a completion. Now we're looking at second and eight. Yeah, uh, number 21, Stephen Weiss, a uh, player from Bishops. He actually joined us late in the season because uh, I believe uh, Egypt was running late or something like that. Ended up down here later than normal. Okay. Balance formation. Gas has got the ball. He's looking downfield. Got his man caught. Good first down. Picked up eight yards on that play easily. Stepped out of bounds. So we're going to be down just beyond uh, the center field. And there's a three-minute warning right on the nose. So good first down by the Wanderers. Looks like they're going to try to drive hard. They've got the clock on their side. They've got stop time. They still have uh, a timeout. We'll see how they use that to their advantage. Go along here. So we're looking at first and 10 just beyond center field on the 54-yard line. Cassidy still in the uh, upright drop back position. He's looking at four receivers left, one to the right, tailback. Roll it hard to his left, looking downfield for his man. He's got him. Complete, still on his feet, still moving. Got four yards out of that. That was number 82, McNamee. A little bit of John going on the field. Oh, no, come on now, guys. Yeah, some of these guys have played against each other for years, and it's just back and forth, back and forth. Like I said, there's always a heated rivalry between St. John and Moncton, uh, you know, with any sport. And that's Bobby McIntyre. Now, Bobby Mack has been around for a long time. He played in Fredericton for a number of years. Yes, His yes. father was a coach there. Yes, he played for the Fredericton Gladiators yeah. before coming back to Moncton to play for the Mustangs. Yeah. Bobby's always had a, an attitude that he wears on his sleeve, even though they're short sleeves. <laughs> So we're looking at the Wanderers, looking hard left. He's got his man open over the middle, deep down the field. Looks like a good 25, 30 yard play on that. Yeah, that's number 15, Joel Seal for the Wanderers. Now Israel is down for that's the Mustangs. So we see the replay here. He looked hard to his right, deep downfield, caught it on the run, in and out, and down he went. Now I'm not sure what happened to Israel. I didn't see anything there. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, he's up, he's moving, so it must have just been a quick little shock maybe. Yeah, a stinger of some sort. It looked like he might have rolled his ankle or just cramped it the wrong way or something. Unfortunately, in Canadian football, once again, even though he's not seriously hurt, he's still got to go off for three plays. And that could be a huge factor for the Mustangs defense right now, actually losing number 11, Israel Alunga, playing the, the deep safety position. So we're seeing the Mustangs put together a couple of nice little plays, or the Mustangs, I'm sorry. The Wanderers put together a couple of nice little plays here. So we're sitting here, we've got uh, four receivers to the right, we've got one to the left. Cassidy is upright still, he's looking downfield. Quick give to number 10. And tries to come up through the middle. So sometimes what, what, what you end up there is the defense thinks it's play, this pass play, pass play, pass play. So we see the replay here again. But uh, it doesn't look like anybody was fooled. Now it looked like the pulling guard went down, tripped. Yeah. 66, yeah. And, and that was all the difference in the world, I think, to that play. Yeah, that, that could have been the difference of positive yards versus negative yards or picking up five versus only picking up two. And I believe the ball carrier was number 10, Alex McDonald. Yes, it was Alex McDonald, yeah. So Alex McDonald's in the tailback position. We're looking at three receivers left, two receivers right, a little bit of pre-snap motion. Now we're looking at quads. No, staying with a 32 set. 82's coming into the H-back set. Looks like some inside protection. Looking deep downfield. He's got a man, but just over his head. That looks like that's number four, Adam Spurl. That was the intended target. And the ball just set a little bit out of the fingertips of Cassidy as he's letting that yeah. go. And that's when you see the ball keep rising and rising and rising instead of falling like that. Yeah. Instead of hitting him in the numbers, it just went over his head, and Bobby Mack was right behind him. Now we'll see what happens here. We're third and nine and three quarters. 
We're down on the 19 yard line. So really we got, I mean, it's obviously four down football at this point because we've got a minute and 14 left in the, in the half. Yes. Castle takes the ball, he's looking hard to his left. Ball's up in the air, he's got a man. Can't quite get there, the ball landed out of, out of bounds. I think number 88 was the intended target. Well, yeah, I, I Cody Carr, yeah. Yeah, he was the lone guy over there. I think he was hoping that there might be some call on interference there, but when the ball lands out of bounds, that's an uncatchable ball, and you're not going to see a flag on that one. The good double coverage on that by the Mustangs. Yeah. Fourth down. So we're going to see what happens here. Looks like uh, there's a clock stoppage. Yeah, we see a mass substitution again. Uh, our friends at home might not be able to see it. Camera's not on them, but obviously we can see it ourselves. It looks like we're going to see the Wanderers set up for a field goal here, as opposed to go for the go for the touchdown. Maybe we'll see a fake. Um, I'd like to think they'll go for it and just come back after half, calm down a bit, like I said, and get themselves together. Oh, I guess they're going to take a timeout here and probably probably draw, rethink it, draw something up maybe. Yeah, so we we did see the Wanderers come out. They were setting up. It looked like they had their field goal unit out there. It looked like they were going to try to do a field goal. Uh, perhaps the coach said, well, just a second, guys. We've got a minute nine. We still have a timeout. Let's let's rethink this. Yeah, because a minute nine in Canadian football, we all know it, it could last forever or what seems like forever, but it's obviously not a half an hour or anything like that. But a minute in Canadian football can take some time. What we're what we're looking at here is we've got the Mustangs are set up with their with their defense, and here comes the Wanderers back from the sideline. If I had to guess, I'd say that is their starting offensive yeah, line. Yeah, that does look like uh, the, the offense. So let's see what they've got up their sleeve at this point. Well, at this point in the game, you know, sometimes looking at the score, it, it, it's it's a little hard to look at, but you know, you're fourth and whatever and deep into the second quarter, you might as well just go for it. So we got Alex McDonald still in the tailback position. Looking hard to his left, he's got a man and he's caught that's, it! That's a touchdown. Right through the slot position, right a skinny little post. Really not not any different than you drop just in, nope. in Sandlot football, right? 82 releases off the line, that's McNamee. Yep. And he finds that seam right between the three different defenders and that was all she wrote. Now he's got the height, he's got the arms, he's got the reach. And he made the catch. So now we're interesting in this game. We're 29-13, going for the extra point. Now, what what I'll be interested to see is whether or not the Wanderers actually go for two here to try to make up for the two they gave up on the last touchdown yes. that the Mustangs gave up. I believe if they go for two, they're trying to carry the momentum over into the second half because you know the game's not done yet. There's still a lot of time left, and anything can happen. That's right, and to remind everybody at home, the Wanderers did win the to coin toss at the beginning of the game, so they deferred to the second half, so they will accept the, the kickoff, so they will get the ball back. They're lined up in an offensive formation. They've got uh, four receivers right, they've got one left. He's looking hard to his left, he's got a man. He's, uh, oh, in and out of his hands. Great defensive play. Number four for Zach Terrio. Zach Terrio, the, the old man on the, on the team now. And we, we see that it was a great little play, drag across the middle, 22 is, is coming across, he's got his hands up, he's looking for the ball, and Zach is there, 82, I'm sorry. I think I said 22. McNamee was, was trying to convert his own touchdown. Well, some of these younger kids, you know, they, they don't have the, the abilities like the veterans do, so you're probably gonna see Cassidy play his favorite side or his player his favorite receivers today. Like he's, he's picking at McNamee quite a number of times. Well, uh, and we've yet to see him really go to Joel Seal. I've, I've, I'm very surprised we haven't seen more of Joel this game. Yeah, we really haven't seen him identify. I think that there was one play that he was the target. The rest is yep. McNamee and Keith. Uh, Sproul's been there a few times. Robinson hasn't really been the target for very many passes either. So. No, no. And yep. Joel Seal has been with the, the Wanderers for a number of years, and he's usually one of the workhorses out there. Sometimes, oh, here we go with the kickoff. Deep. Drops into a soft zone. It's funny, Mustangs didn't have anybody there to cover it off. Picked it up off the turf on the 12-yard uh, line. He's got a little bit of a seam, brings it up as far as the 30, 31-yard line. So we're, we're talking about a good 20, 21 yards. Oh, a little bit of pushing after. Now, guys, there goes the flags. There's no need for the second shot. The first one is typically because somebody's stepping on somebody and they're, they're, they're trying to get out of the way. So here we see the replay. Let's see if we see any of the shoving at the end. Yeah, it's never nice when a 250-pound man steps on your toes. So the ball drops into a weak zone. Nobody there covered for the Mustangs, which is a little odd. 
comes up hard. He's got a bit, a little bit of room, some blockers there, and then he's met by four or five wanderers and just stopped. They're, they're fighting for the ball. I mean, they want to see that ball pop out, right? So then we see this, and then a little bit of push back, and then a little bit of push. Yeah, back. I, I think it was just a, a bad trip by the Wanderers player that fell backwards. I don't think anyone forced him. It was just the, the way he stepped. I think they were completely tangled up and stuff. But, you know, that's that's the way this game happens. That's right. And the referees got together and they decided that both sides were just as guilty, and so yep. both sides were, were penalized, which exactly. results in nothing. So first and 10 on the 30, 31 yard line. Mustangs are gonna try to score, of course, to take out the half. Patriot keeps the ball. Patriot keeps the ball, naked bootleg. <laughs> we call that a naked bootleg because he doesn't have a lead blocker and it's just him and all the defense. I think what the Mustangs are just trying to do right now is he picked up the first down, as we can see on the replay here, and he stayed in bounds, which is gonna get that clock to roll. Now it's interesting, I mean, it's, it's a, a play action instead of just a straight rollout. Uh, so they did take a little bit of time off that way. He's looking downfield, so he's putting the ball in there, willing to stop the clock after all. Caught, running out of bounds to stop the play. Number eight, Tyler Ivany again. That's a name that we've heard a few times today. So that was a quick little, That's you see on the, the replay. So Patriot takes the ball, he's just immediately looking his right. There's no play action, there's no fake or anything like that. Just looking for his man to come open in the flats. Nice little catch, knifes it back upfield. Finds the outside edge and leverage and gets a good first down out of it. Uh, Tyler Ivany is actually another Moncton High graduate. Not this year, I believe he graduated, graduated a few years ago, and he's actually playing at St. FX now. So we're sitting here with three to the left, two to the right, H back to the right. Takes the, the snap, looking downfield hard, finds his man over the middle. Nice, easy pitch and catch, and again, that's number eight, Ivany. Tyler Ivany again, yes. And he's still in bounds, so that clock's going to start rolling once the officials reset that ball. So it was a good first down, good 14-yard uh, catch out of there, catch and run out of that. Ball looks good coming downfield like that. And Ivany catches it, puts it away nicely. Could have had a few more yards. I'm surprised we've yet to see the Mustangs run their hurry-up offense. And here we are. Does a play action again? Roll out to the left. Oh, completed. Looked like it came off the turf, but he de he definitely did catch that. Yeah. That looked like that was number 88. Uh, I believe it was number 80. Number 80. Okay. Yeah, Gimo. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the crease of the shirt is messing <laughs> up my old eyes. You're, you're not the only one. You know, there's been a lot of people that say that, that red on black is hard to read from up here. It, it is a little difficult. So we got a timeout called by, the, uh, by Moncton, by the uh, Mustangs. So the Wanderers will take a moment, too, and, and try to figure out how to stop this. There's still 20.9 seconds left on the clock. Uh, it's second and two on this particular series. Ball is sitting at the 36 yard line, so certainly within Ben George's leg if he wants to try to kick a field goal here at this point. Mustang still has one more timeout after yes. this, so they could stop the clock. Uh, what do you think they're gonna do? Do you think they're gonna throw it? Do you um, think they're gonna run it? I'd like to say they're gonna run the ball again. Okay. Uh, I don't know why. I just, I like our, our run game. It's, it's, it's nice. I think what, if, if this was a traditionally called football team, what we would see is a small little run to the right, try to center that ball in the middle of the field, run some time off the clock. Yeah, and then kick the field goal, yeah. That's right. We'll see if that's what happens. We've got three receivers right, two left. Fail back to the right. No, it's going to be a pass. Makes uh, me look like a fool. There we go. To First the running down, back. Though. Easily to the running back. Comes out of the field. <laughs> leaps. Leaps what a, one, what a run. deeks another, gets a good first down out of it. He get, gets a good 20 yard run out of it and we're down to the 12 uh, yard line. Yeah, that's so we, the so running back number 20, Caleb Fogarty, just ran a little route, got the short pass and picked up a number of yards. That's the first time we've seen either team use the running back in the passing game like that, coming out in, in the like a little outlet pass like that. Yep. Uh, sometimes you'll see them take off downfield, sometimes you'll see them do some, some little little outs like that but that's the first time we've seen either team do it today so we are 12 seconds left on the clock we're sitting first and 10 shotgun looking hard to his right balls high in the air looking for his receiver downfield double coverage knocks it down incomplete so now we're 5.8 seconds left on the clock and that looks like his intended target was hicks josh hicks again yeah so he looked to his left tried to try to look the the receivers off or tried to look the, the safeties off but 
I think everybody knows that Hicks is the number one receiver right now, and yeah. so they're putting two guys on him every time. It's funny because the Mustangs actually have a funny little nickname for Josh Hicks. It's a hashtag cheat code. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure exactly why they call him it, but it's stuck this season, and that's his nickname yeah. on the team. All right, well. So we're seeing them set up for the uh, field goal attempt. Ben yes. George is going to be kicking it. The line of scrimmage is the 12-yard line, but the point of the ball being set is on the 22, 23-yard line. And it's up. And it's good. So three points for Ben George. Makes up for his miss earlier in the game. Ben George's kick is good. And we're still sitting at 1.6 seconds left in the clock. So we do have to play that 1.6 seconds. Here we see on the, on the replay, nice snap. Gets the ball down quick. Nice ball, high and through the uprights, right smack dab down the down Broadway, as they say. Yes. So we're going to see the teams have to take the field for that 1.6 seconds. I suspect that what we'll see is we'll see a squib kick just to get the ball down to the ground. And that and would be my guess as well. And, yes. And Let's just get this half over. That's right. Nobody nobody wants to get injured because they're trying to play a hero with one second. Well, left the you clock. still got a, a brand new game and a second half of football to play here. Oh, looks like they've elected instead of to receive a kickoff, they're going to scrimmage the ball uh, from the 35-yard line, which is an option. Yeah, after teams a, are given after a field goal in Canadian football. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to just scrimmage the ball here instead of a the kickoff, kneel it, and that's it. That's the end of it. So an exciting first half of football so far, in the sense that uh, lots of points on the board: 32 for 32 for the Mustangs and 13 for the Wanderers. I mean, that's a that's a combined score of 45 points. That's typically a full game. Yeah, normally, they, yeah, that's what you'd see between two teams in a full hour of football. So we'll see what happens in the second half. We've seen some good pass. We've get, seen some good run. Uh, both teams have, ex, uh, have exposed the other's weakness on occasion. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the Wanderers are able to come out of the gate and get a quick score and make this into a 20 to 32 game uh, after the first series. I think we'll see a different Wanderers team when they come out in the second half. They're going to start spicing things up, I'd like to think. They're going to pull out and uh, show us what they actually get because, you know, this is a championship game. Now is the time to use any tricks or secrets that you've been holding back. Absolutely. So we're going to take a quick break here uh, as the team's going and, and get uh, hydrated and, and figure out what they're going to do in the second half. Everybody at home, come on back for the second half of Moncton Mustangs hosting the St. John Wanderers in the 2022 MFL Championship Game of the Year. the second half we just saw the kickoff from uh, the Mustangs uh, to the Wanderers uh, bounced out of field so we're getting ready here to, to start the second half or to, to play the second half looks like the Mustangs kicked the ball it went out of bounds I'm not sure that anybody touched it no, it didn't look like anyone touched it. It looked like it just bounced out on its own. So I imagine the team will get it up It'll on the 40. Yeah. So they're, gonna, they're just going to take the ball. Instead of having a re-kick, they're going to pick the ball up and start. First and 10 on the 40-yard line. So we'll see what the Wanderers can do here. Choppy, give any thought through the, uh, the halftime. What do you think that the uh, Mustangs have, or what, what do you think the Wanderers have to do at this point to try to make a game of it? Uh, I think they're just going to have to come out and play their best and throw everything down. Like I said earlier today, it's a championship game. You you don't stop today. You just keep going. Well, we just saw something there that was a, a little different than we saw in the first half. So we got number 26, O'Connell. O'Donnell, O'Donnell I mean. Took a little quick little handoff. Uh, it wasn't really much of a pass. Just a, a play action. Yeah, but just uh, give, give the ball to O'Donnell, and, and he comes hard to the right-hand side of the, the offensive line. Yeah, and he was just shy of the first down by like a yard and a half. Yeah, there we go. Quick little give, finds his avenue, gets to the outside, finds some blocks that are key, and picks up almost a first down. So we're second and one, back to uh, O'Donnell, right up the middle. Good, hard-fought game. Gain there, he's got uh, a good four or five yards. Follow O'Donnell on the carry. That's good for a Wanderers first down. Yeah. 
So here we see the replay. O'Donnell takes the, the handoff. All that is just a, a, a naked handoff. There's no lead blocker. There's just uh, find a big head and uh, get behind it. Here we are, we are four receivers to the left, and again, just o O'Donnell is taking the ball right up the middle. They're trying to uh, ride this horse as much as they can. He's had two real good runs, but this time here, the Mustangs, I think, uh, sniffed oh, uh, got a couple on the play. So we are second and eight or so. At some point, we're gonna probably see, I would suggest anyway, St. John is going to try to speed things up a little bit to try to push the Mustangs back yeah, I, on their heels a little bit. I'd imagine we'd probably see them throw a, a hurry-up offense out there as well. So we got uh, quads to the left. Cassie's looking, oh, just pitches it out to O'Donnell, who then takes the ball, drops his head, just makes it back to the line of scrimmage. It is going to be third down now, no gain on that play. It could have had legs, though, if he had just gotten past that, that one uh, defender, number 92, it looked like. Yeah, that's Gabriel St. Germain. The he, big load, isn't he's it? He's over 350, I believe. The 26 coming up there, there, and bang, just knocks him down. Welcome to the league. Yes, sir. So we are third and long here. We, we're a good nine yards to a first down. Uh, I think that we're going to see St. John at this point because at least they're close to halfway down the field. I think they'll probably play all four downs. Yeah. So we're sitting here with uh, three receivers to the left, two to the right. Oh, bad Ooh. snap over his head. This is disastrous for St. Oh, John. Oh, my. Still He's able to get it back, but that is just an absolute disaster for St. John, unfortunately. The Wanderers looked like they were trying to hurry something along. Here we see the ball replay. The, the ball comes way over his head. He had no chance to recover that. And he almost muffs the recovery here. It rolls underneath <laughs> his hip, but he was able to, to scoop that back in and, and keep possession. Uh, really, just all, all he's got to do at this point is punt it. There's no way that you're going to yeah, go that, fourth that's, and 25 here. That's really deep. That is unfortunate for uh, St. John because it looked like they had a couple of nice little runs there and they were moving forward. Yeah. Now an objectionable conduct being called against St. John. So something must have been said after the fact, uh, after the play. So it's a dead ball foul. So now not only do we have the 20-yard loss, but we're going to tackle another 15 onto it. That's 35 yards off of that. And that's just from the original line yeah, of scrimmage. Yeah. The so we are talking fourth and a lot. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're just going to punt the ball and wish for the best. Yeah, that's all, that's all you can do right now at this point, I think. So we've got an onside man again uh, on the left side of the punter, number 13 for St. John, Enoch Nagoya. The punt goes downfield. Israel's got it, catches it clean, picks up two, three, four yards out of that before he gets pushed out by actually number 13, the onside man. Enoch Nagoya. So that was uh, not what I think St. John was hoping for to open up the second half. Um, obviously, they wanted to score there, but uh, we ended up with uh, far less than that. Here we see on the replay, Israel catches that in the air nicely and clean. Gets three, four yards, then finally gets pushed out of bounds. Yeah, St. John's not running a bad play with that punt. They got a kicker that can seem to hang that ball in the air for a number of seconds to allow number 13 some time to run down there. And I'm assuming number 13 can jump as well because that's usually the kind of play you'd run with an onside man is have him run down and jump for the ball. So a very confusing backfield for the Moncton team. Mustangs didn't really work out for them. They only got maybe a yard, maybe two out of that. They had a whole lot of pre-snap motion trying to get cutesy with the ball. We see here on the replay, you see It'll tailback is stationary. H -back, or the the X-back comes in hard, fakes it. Tailback then takes it on a delay. But by that point, uh, St. John's already in the backfield. Yeah. A couple of Mustangs standing around looking at it, to be honest. So here we are. We are second and a long nine. Uh, the Mustangs have got uh, three receivers right, two receivers left. Pre-snap motion coming in tight to protect the quarterback. High snap. Play action pass. Hard to the outside. Nice completed pass. Looks like easily a first down and steps out right around the 26, 27 yard line. That looked like that was number 82. Yeah, Josh McDonald. Josh McDonald. Good for a Mustangs first down. Yeah, and that brings up a Mustangs first down as well. So the Mustangs are picking up right where they left off in the second half. They are really having their way. We'll see here on the, on the replay. Uh, again, number 82, Josh McDonald uh, manhandling his defensive backs and picking up an extra four or five yards of that run. So we see uh, Moncton break the huddle. Again, we are three receivers right, two receivers left, single back. 
Quarterback takes the ball, looking downfield, looking hard to his over the top of the middle, and Kaz's man, nice completed pass, picks up easily 15 yards, and again, that is number 82. Josh McDonald Josh once McDonald. again. This time he starts on the inside receiver position on the right-hand side, just as a deep drag over top of the middle. Finds that soft spot behind the, the defensive uh, linebacking core and in front of the safety, and that is a tough spot to defend. And once again, the Mustangs have depth at that receiver position where we've been calling all kinds of names today. So we are three receivers, to no, four to the right, one to the left, play action to the left, comes hard to the right, has his man in the end zone, That's and he's caught it number clean. Eight. Number eight, Tyler, Tyler Ivany. <laughs> So Tyler's been called a few times. His number is, is, is obviously on the top of the score sheet today. So we see here on the replay, see four receivers right, one left, play action to the, to the left, hard roller to the right, finds his man, sets it up high in the, ball, in the air, and the only guy that's going to catch it, Ivany. That was a great jump by Ivany to catch that ball. So we're setting up, of course, for the extra point. Ben George is, is looking to be perfect on his uh, extra point attempts today. Maybe I shouldn't say that without jinxing him. Ball is down, it's up, and it is good. Ben George's kick is good. Add one more point for Ben George in the score sheet, and we are now looking at a score of 39 to 13 for the Mustangs. And again, that is not what the Wanderers were hoping for. No, we're almost at a 27 point spread here. For more information about football for high school girls. So let's see what happens when we come out. We'll be uh, obviously setting up still in the, in the third quarter. So we'll have Mustangs on the left-hand side of your screen. Moving towards the right. We've got uh, Wanderers will be receiving the kickoff. will be on the right side of your screen. Wearing their blue and gold, which has been the historic cover colors of the, the Wanderers for as long as I can remember. Yes, the W have worn that for quite some time. Ben George will be kicking off again from the 45 yard line. These kickoffs have been uh, fairly predictable. Here we go, and it is up and deep to the receiving team right. Picked up off the fly on about the 12 yard line. Nice little run back. That looks like it was number 47. Aiden Keith on the return. First down for the one. Did I miss that? No. Uh, with the return, it was 87, and I 87. believe it, it was number 8, Tyler <laughs> Ivany, that made the tackle on that one. I've got to check my eyes. That was Aiden Keith. That makes far more sense. <laughs> that was 47. I couldn't imagine an offensive lineman back there returning a kickoff. <laughs> so we got the Wanderers. They're going to start off uh, this particular drive on their own, looks like the 26-yard, 27-yard line, deep in their own end zone. They're setting up balance formation uh, three, uh, looks like two receivers left, two receivers right with an H-back right. He looks hard to his left, finds his man, number four, open for a good five-yard catch. Didn't get anything after that. So we got number four on that, Adam Spurl caught the ball, number five, six yards. Number six, Bobby McIntyre on the, on the tackle there. Bobby's always been one of those uh, textbook tacklers, gets down low, hangs onto that leg, and doesn't let go. Yeah, use them old bands of steel. <laughs> So we got the second and call it four. Wanders broke their huddle. They've got uh, three receivers to the right, got uh, two to the left. A little bit of pre-snap motion comes in tight. Handoff, quick little bounce plat play, in and out, in and out. Picks up the first down though. That was hard fought by Alex McDonald. Bouncing and pinballing off a couple of defenders as he goes down the field. As we see on the replay, he oh, immediately gives a nice down. little uh, trap play. Opens up the line a little bit, gives him an extra couple of yards. Now he gets. So first and 10, up to the 40-yard line. Looks like the Wanderers have got something going here in this series. Let's see if they can continue it. As we uh, remember, the last series came apart with a bad snap to the quarterback that he had to recover 20 yards deep into his own uh, backfield. Pre-snap motion, here we go, going downfield. He's got his man over the top, but it falls just a little short amongst three different uh, defenders uh, by, by Moncton. Looks like Moncton's playing a nice tight zone, is what it looks like to me. They had Aiden Keith nice, nice and deep, but uh, Joel Seal was coming across the middle, and it looked like he was really expecting to get the ball, and when it was overthrown by him, it looked like something went wrong there. I, I, can, uh, I can only guess that we'll see more of their veterans in this second half. Likes players like Joel. 
So we got four receivers left. Just looking left the whole way. 82, he's got it over the top of the middle. He's got first down yardage, but he keeps giving it back up. And I don't think they're gonna give him forward progress because he gave up his own progress. That is unfortunate because he had first down out of that. That was number 82. Here we see on the, on the replay, that was McNamee. Comes hard just to drag right over top of the middle. He's got the ball, catches it nice, puts it away clean. And he's got first down yardage, and then he gives it back up again. So we are third and two. They didn't quite get it. So let's see what they do here. St. John is now in the right-hand hash mark. They've got uh, two receivers left, three receivers right, so they're trying to bound up the, the right side of the defense. He's looking hard to the right. He's got his man, hands up, caught it between two defenders, easily first down before he steps oh, out, yes. picked up five, yes. six yards out of that. Again, that's 82 McNamee. Yeah, pass complete again to Logan McNamee. That's good for a Wanderers first down. So we're gonna see what's going on here next with the, with the Wanderers. They've got first down right at center field on the 55 yard line. Yeah. Take a little bit of time in the huddle, they break it. Yeah. Come out there in the right hand hash mark. They've got three receivers left, two right. They've got a, a tight formation on the left side even though, even though they've got a wide side of the field here. Center's checking with the quarterback, making sure they're on time for the, for the snap. Ball's up. Looking downfield, over top of the middle. Oh, he had his man number one, but he, <laughs> Braden Robinson ended up pulling an alligator arm. I'm pretty sure he could down. feel the middle linebacker, number 44, Brian Cormier, standing right in his way, as we see here on the replay. Yeah. We see a quick release on the left side. He's coming, dragging right across the middle, and he just brings his arms in tight because he knows he's got two defenders that are going to take him and have their way with him. So we're second and 10 on the 50 yard line still. Wanderers are trying to keep this drive alive, trying to move forward. Yeah, yeah I think we're gonna see the Wanderers air the ball out quite a bit more here now with the score 39-13. We've got four receivers to the right, heavy presence to the right. Hard rollout to the left, looking for somebody. I don't know what he was looking for. He just he dumped the ball. Maybe he was waiting for 82, McNamee to come hard across the field, but he was under a lot of pressure. So we see there, he fakes it. Yeah, He's got there was a lot of guys in his face. Yeah, that Mustang's D-line, most of them guys average easy 250 pounds. Their defensive ends are a little lighter because obviously they're a little bit faster, but uh, their interior tackles are very heavy, just like the Mustang goal line. So we see actually that the referee apparently agreed with us that there was no receiver in the area. Yeah. And so he's been called for intentional grounding, which means that we're going to have to back it up. So we are looking at third and about 15 yards, 16 yards. I suspect that we'll still still see them play all four downs here. I don't think we'll see them punt it away now. Yeah, three. championship games, you go for it. There's no practice on Tuesday this week coming. So right in the middle of the field, we've got uh, three receivers right, two left. Looking down hard, <laughs> under a lot of pressure. Escapes, gets squirts out of the pocket. Looking oh. for 88 on the outside, almost serves it up for, it for uh, up an interception. Now. Intended target there was Cody Carr. That's the first time we've called that name all day. Then Weiss over there, number 21. He was looking hard to his left, but he just didn't see a receiver, and he panicked a little bit, got squirted out of the pocket, had to find somebody, and uh, dumped it off to what he thought was a safe outlet. But unfortunately, just wasn't quite there. Big number 96, Ben Dunstan, looking for a sack, for a sack of the day. Pretty close. So we are fourth down, fourth and long. Uh, we're easily 15, 16 yards to go. It looks like they are setting up to punt. Number one, Braden Robinson is back. Israel is back for the Mustangs to catch it. We do have an onside man again, number 13 for the Wanderers. The ball is up high. 13 is not going to get downfield because this time the Mustangs picked him up. Number 23 did a great job there, Chris Brown, tracking down the onside man and keeping him out of the play. As we see here on the replay, there's the punt. And if you see it on your screen, you don't see it. Don't really there. see that the team for the, the ball just lands and bounces out of the play. play. This is not a penalty on a punt like it is on a kickoff, of course. Yeah. Now the Mustangs will take over where it went out of bounds on, it looks like it's got to be the 39-yard line. So I think what we'll see is we'll see the Mustangs will probably... I guess if I'm a betting man, I would say that we're going to see them keep their foot on the gas for at least one more score, and then after that, just run the ball and run the clock out. 
Normally the goal for most teams when they get a spread like this is to get into straight time and get this done and over with. But I'd like to think the Wanderer defense is going to stay in this and keep them going. So what we saw there was, again, another bubble screen out to the, to the wide uh, on the left-hand side of the offense. So Patrick takes the ball, passes it uh, quick out to, looks like, 83. Yes, 83, Edward. <laughs> Edward Adderley. He's from, uh, I believe he's from Jamaica. Never played tackle football in his life. He started playing flag football when he came here to Canada, and then next thing you know, he's uh, another grown man playing tackle football in and his there 40s. We, there, there he is. There's Adderley again. So he's in the game, and he's playing the playing his best he can. Picked up a first down. So we'll see here on the replay. Nice little uh, look from, from Patry over. Adderley reaches up, both hands, kick, takes it, puts it away, knifes up field, gets his hand out on the defender and picks up another four or five yards after contact. Yeah, it's just amazing how many guys the Moncton Mustangs have actually scouted out of the, the Moncton Flag League. Like well, they, they have a handful of guys that have never played high school football, but yet come as grown men to play this. So we start off with three receivers right, two receivers left, a little pre-snap motion, and we've got a nice... Number 88, Nice Cam off Worley. tackle run. And a nice there little cutback, and he's got open go. field. Can he make it into the oh, end yeah, zone? He's gone. And it's a touchdown! That was a fantastic run. That was a 54, 53-yard run all the way. I won't say it was untouched, because he was obviously touched a few times. Here we see on the replay. He starts left, comes hard, sees that off tackle, uh, off tackle hole open up. He keeps following his blockers, realizes everybody's over pursuing, cuts back against the flow, puts his hand out, pushes off number 13 just to make sure he's got that extra couple of steps. Bing, bang, boom, in 4 6. Yeah, that had to be about at least 55 yards because our downs box started running at the 55 to get down to the end zone. Yeah, yeah, so. And here we are. We've got that uh, that strange formation that we talked about earlier. Yes. I'll let you call it because you know. I, I don't know what to call it, but it's <laughs> it's it's whatever you want it to be. They got the they got Josh Hicks on the outside, one on one man coverage, and he catches it. And then you can also have your center peel up the middle for a short pass as well, which we've seen Denis Dueron, the pride of Skidook, catch a, a touchdown pass earlier. That's Denis right. normally a long snapper, but he's one of these guys yet again that plays in the Moncton Flag League. For a big man, he has very good hands. So here we see on the replay. And, I mean, the Wanderers, they, they lined up, they covered off, and look, you got to give props to number seven there, Matt Morton. He was in the right spot at the right time. It just he wasn't going to be able to defend it. Yeah, you're just up against a better, a better athlete. It's just all it comes down to. So we're 47-13 with three minutes and 29 seconds left in the, in the third quarter. Uh, heading towards what is a very lopsided score at this point, but the game is not over until the final whistle blows. We'll see what. Oh, it's far from over. There's still lots of time. We're still three and a half minutes left in the third quarter, and we still got a fourth to go. Ben George kicking off, nice deep high ball this time. Field on on the nine yard line. Looks like it was Braden Robinson. Yes. Picks up a couple yards in the middle, and brought down finally on about the 35 yard line. That's a good 25-yard uh, the pickup. So we see this here on the replay. Robinson catches it clean. Starts immediately up the middle of the field, looking for some blockers. Finds a little bit of a wedge building, but then outruns his blockers and is immediately taken down. Yeah, that was a great return by uh, Braden. So we're first and 10 on the 35-yard line. Time is blown in. Wanders are still in their huddle. Talking about what might work against this very stout defense of the Mustangs. Obviously, we're still in a passing situation. We have three receivers left, two receivers right. Shotgun formation. Pitches it quick to the outside, looking for an edge play. And it looks like that was a, a little bit of pushing after the whistle, maybe? Yeah, there looked like there was a little bit in there, some of the interior linemen. So O'Donnell's still the workhorse. And he, was, he, unfortunately, he ran in underneath his block and raid right into the arms of Big 96. Ben Dunstan. Ben Dunstan. So we're seeing here second down and really second and 10 still. That, that entire run uh, came for naught. And we'll see what the, the Wanderers are able to put together at this point. They're taking a long time in their huddle. Break the huddle to come into the line. Still in uh, shotgun formation, three receivers left, two to the right. Coming to the line hard, he's got his man, 
caught, and he's still on his feet, still looking to try to pick up positive yards. Isn't quite to the first down yard marker, but he's getting there. Not quite there, though. It was number 82 that was running that McNamee. Favorite receiver for Cassidy today. You see here in the replay, he's immediately looking at him. He's the guy he wants to hit. Gets that edge, catches on the outside of the defender, and is able to pick up four or five really hard-fought yards. Still third down, though. Third and two. I suspect we'll see O'Donnell take a quick little uh, handoff here. I'm not sure they'll even waste any time with the play action. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to see from the W anymore. I'm surprised we've yet to see Nick Binkowski go in for them. Oh! Does not look like Keefe was ready for that ball at all. Came on his back shoulder, unfortunately. So we'll see here. Get a lot of a lot of pressure coming up the middle from the Mustangs, but good blocking by uh, by the Wanderers. I mean, Cassidy had time to yep. set his feet, but he was just trying to get that ball out so quick to try to get that uh, that overmatch of uh, McNamee on on the, the DBs when he pick up that first down yardage. So the drop pass, they don't lose yards. No, no. We are fourth and one and a half to two. They uh, have elected not to punt. See Cassidy still in the shotgun formation, looking for the balls. Got it. Looking for his receivers. Got his hands on him. Oh. oh, great play by Zach Terrio. Again, the old man of the Mustangs. Yeah. Was able to knock that ball out at the last second and cause a, a, an incomplete pass and therefore a turnover and downs. Yeah, I, I think Weiss had a little bit of hand on that ball as well. Cassidy was looking hard. And, I mean, he was, yeah, he he was, was on his target. Covered, yeah. But he was double covered, absolutely. Yeah. So Joel Seal was, was the intended target there. As, as you mentioned in the first half, we're a little surprised that we haven't seen Seal be a little bit more in the game. Yeah, being a veteran for the, the W, uh, like I said, I'm surprised we haven't seen Nick Vinkowski either today. Like, I'm very surprised that the, the W's number one quarterback isn't playing today. So we are looking at three receivers left, two to the right. Pre-snap motion coming up, protect the quarterback. Deep ball, deep to the outside, and just falls outside of his receiver's reach. And that looks like it's Edward Adderley again. Yeah, that was Eddie again. <laughs> so nice ball, nice position, just a little outside. Yeah. Bet you Adderley wishes he could have that route back just a little oh, bit. Oh, I bet you every receiver he could <laughs> wish he have a few routes back. Patrick put that in a great spot, though. Was, yeah, he did. Patrick's a great quarterback. I, I think he was uh, very good at Mount A, just uh, didn't get enough time. So they broke the huddle with three receivers left, two right, a little bit of pre-snap motion, bringing the uh, X and Y to the line. Play action pass. Dump it off to number eight, Tyler uh, Ivany, <laughs> and he has got all He's day gone. to run. Ah, Another touchdown. Moncton Mustangs. Close out the, the third quarter for all intents and purposes. Yeah, with that score now, they move into a position where once the ball snapped in the fourth quarter, we're going to roll straight time. So the fourth quarter is going to roll fairly quickly. You're going to see 15 minutes go pretty fast in Canadian football. And we saw that play there. I mean, Ivan, he just, he just has his little drag on the inside, really shallow, takes the yep. ball right behind the DB hanging out in the, in the five-yard zone. Great receiver, yeah. He's, he's great. He caught it on the run, full speed. It's it's so tough to defend against that. It really yeah. is. That's great timing between the quarterback and, and the receiver. Yeah. So we're looking at an extra point kick again, and it's up, and it's good. So Ben George ben is, is perfect on his extra points today. And look, I'll give him perfect on his field goals too. Even though he missed one, <laughs> he's the one that made the tackle. So yes, yeah, so give him, give him a, uh, whatever you want to give him for that. But yeah, he missed the field goal, but he made the tackle. So yeah, props to you, Ben George. So as you said, we've we've got the fourth quarter starting up now. We're in straight time. Uh, we've got it's 54 to 30, uh, 13. Uh, that is a 40 point differential. So we're going to be looking at straight time. And, uh, We'll probably be out of here in the next 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes. It'll go straight time uh, once the – okay, so the Mustangs are kicking to the W, so as soon as the W snap that first ball on offense, we're going to go into straight time. And the only time it will stop is at the, the discretion of the referee, injuries, timeouts, stuff of that nature. And, look, I mean, the reality is sometimes it just doesn't go the way for one one team. And, and to no, drag no. it out and to make yeah. it – especially in a championship game. Like, yeah, 
like you know, we've said a few times, there is no tomorrow, so let's not drag it out. Yeah. Let's, let's just get through Yeah, this. and, you know, a lot of these guys still got to go to work on Monday too, right? That's right. Well, every one of them probably have to go to work on Monday. I'm not sure. Anyone above 20 years old got to work on Monday. There you go. <laughs> Some so of these kids still go to school, so I, I guess school is kind of like work. Yeah. Ben George kicking off, kicking it nice and deep all the way down to the five-yard line. Picked up clean. Oh, and they pitch reverse. Looking for a little bit of trickery here. Number one is trying to get it, but Mustangs did not fall for that at all. Great little try, and now we got some people jawing at each other. Flags are all over the place. But here we see the the, the replay. And they, set, they did set this up beautifully. Yep. I'll give them that. Nice and hard. Pitches it. Too bad uh, Braden didn't catch that on a full sprint because he might have been able to get around this last little push of the Mustangs. So a little bit of John going on in the field. We've got uh, three flags down. I suspect we're going to see that that is uh, unsportsmanlike or objectionable conduct, probably against St. John. Um, look, the reality is they're yeah, it is against St. John. Uh, they're they're obviously a little a little upset with the way this game is going. Right, everybody well, it, shows up it, expecting a, to win. Right, it's a very emotional game. I don't care who you are, whether you're the coach, you're the players, anybody on that field right now. It, you come out here to a game of football, it's, it's emotional for the fans even. There's there's people that ride these games, and it's an up-and-down roller coaster for some people. So let's see what the what the Wanderers can pull together here in the final 13, 14 minutes of game play. Still in the uh, shotgun formation, still with their starting 12. They're looking at three receivers left, two receivers right. A couple of last-second uh, adjustments to make sure everybody's where they are. Looking hard to his left. Finds a receiver over the top of the middle. That was a great little 15-yard play. That was Cassidy, and it looks like it went to Keefe. So he looks hard to his left, as we see, and Keefe is just coming right off there. Catches the ball, puts it away nice and tight. Oh, seal, I guess. My apologies. Yeah, see him a lot more in this fourth quarter, I'd like to think, because he, he's the type of guy that don't give up. He's a... Uh, you know, he's been playing for the, the dub a while and one of their veterans. Like I said, it, if Nick Benkowski was out here, I'm sure we'd see the two of them a whole lot. We're looking deep downfield. He's got a man. Oh, intercepted. Just a little underthrown Get there, on his feet. That was Stefan Steve Wise. Stephen Weiss. Stephen Weiss. <laughs> Stephen Weiss. Sorry, Stephen. Uh, we'll call him number 21 in black and red. <laughs> And he played that really well. He watched that ball come out of the hands and came in. Yeah, and Cassidy was under a lot of pressure back there. And I, I think he just tried to make a play out of it. Because at this point in the game, you really got nothing to lose. Yeah, he was going downfield. He was hoping to find a little bit of soft spot behind the defensive backs and be able to open that up for a touchdown. So we got a man down right now, so there'll be a few minutes taking him off. Uh, clock is still running. The referees will probably take 30 seconds off, and then they'll probably stop it. Yeah, it's usually about a 30-second roll off, and then they'll stop it, depending on how long it takes for the gentleman to get off the field. So now the Mustangs are going to be taking over the ball after that uh, interception to end that drive. And they are on their 46, 47-yard line. Looks like they're in a little bit tighter formation for the first time quarterback is under center and it looks like we get number two in. And all it is is just a little trap play to the right, a little, uh, little, a little back step play. Now we've got number two, Daniel Comfort in as the quarterback. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny that they put Dan in in the fourth, fourth quarter. Dan's been uh, quite the workhorse for the number of years since I've been around with the Mustangs for the last uh, five, six years. Dan's been the starter guy and uh, yeah, he, he's more of a leader now with the team. He's he's allowing the young guys to come in and develop their game and not always have to carry the workload. So back under center again. Looks like we're just going to be handing the ball off. Oh, a little bit of a bobble on the exchange. That could have been interesting. It's nice to see Comfort is still doing the uh, play, playing the play all the way to the end. So you'll see that. Oh, yeah, he'll, he'll roll out. He'll pretend to block. He'll run halfway down the field. Even though the ball's not there, he's going to do what the quarterback's supposed to do. See a I think it was a little bit of a counter play. If we see it, yeah, yeah. here we are. On yeah, the he rolls out to the side there. Yeah. So counter, bit of a bobble on the exchange as we saw. Number 88 was uh, Cam Morley took that, but he secured it back away again. Still ended up with the first down out of it. 
but again, I, I love seeing Comfort continue his his his, his rollout. He gives the ball off. Yeah. He keeps coming hard to the to his left hand side, left hand side of the offense, and he keeps going downfield because what that sets up for in another game yeah. is is he keeps it, yeah. or he keeps it and rolls out and passes it, or yeah. there's so many things you can do off that, right? So here we are under under center again. Oh no, shotgun, sorry. <laughs> And another give. It looks like uh, Donald's back. At, no. No, 25. 25. G Javier Reyes Landry. Number 25. He would be the youngest of the three running backs that we've seen today. Number uh, 20, Caleb Fogarty, would be, I guess, the middle guy or the same age as number 88, Cam Morley. And number 25, Javier Reyes Landry. He's just uh, fresh out of high school this year. Nice. Does he go by Javier or is it Javier? Javier, sorry, Javier, my bad, my no, bad. His, his dad, man, he's probably going to give me a kick later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad snap over the head of Comfort, and he immediately covers that over. Hey, that, that, that right there is just uh, a show of how this game could turn. You know, if the score was a little different, That's right. one bad snap is all it takes. So they did lose 10 yards. Oh, no, they, they, lost, they lost 12, 13 yards out of that. So we are third and about 15, 16 yards. Mustangs are watching the clock continue to count down. Break their, break their huddle. They're not in, a, not in a hurry to come to the line. No, I think they're going to take their time and roll as much time as they can. Comfort looks at his defense, still in a shotgun. Looks like he was going to maybe keep the ball. Nice little run up the middle to get back six of those lost yards. And was that Javier again? I believe so. Javier Rice Landry on the carry. Yep, Rice Landry, Javier. Yeah, at this point in the game, you know, there's there's no reason to have Caleb Fogarty or Cam Morley in there driving that ball down the middle of the field. You know, let let these young guys in, get their reps. Like I said, Javier, he's, he's going to Dow to play in the AFL this year. Uh, you never know. We might even see him in the AUS with uh, with the reps he's getting tonight. Like, he, he's a kid to watch for. Nice. So again, we're watching the Mustangs really take their time. It's fourth down. They're going to be punting this ball away, but they're going to wait for as much time to come off the clock as possible. And there's a whistle. And it looks like number 17 is the punter, Ben George, as he is the kickoff guy, as he is the place kicker guy. As the said before, once you're a kicker, you're always a kicker, it seems like. <laughs> It's funny because uh, at, at uh, Acadia, Ben plays uh, DB. Does he really? Yeah, he's, oh, he's actually a defensive back. And I believe they only let him let Ben start kicking last season Oh, at Acadia. He wasn't the kicker there. Okay. They found out that he could kick here and gave him a shot. So what do we got going on here? We had a, There was a whistle that blew. I don't know whether there was a, a I believe there was a timeout that was taken. Looked like the referee, uh, number 16, Jack Kingston, signaled a timeout. So nice high punt all the way down the field. Picked up on the one-yard line by number one, Braden Robinson. Starts to his left. He cuts hard to his right. Couldn't find any daylight. Ultimately taken down at the 16-yard line. Here we see the punt. They're, they're rushing two or three guys trying to get in to maybe block that punt. Doesn't give a whole lot of defender or blockers for the ball carrier. You see he catches the ball clean. That's hard to his right, looking, trying to deke, trying to find that avenue, but he just can't get there. Yeah. You know, the score doesn't necessarily dictate the gameplay today. I'd, I'd like to think that the, the, the W, you know, maybe they're missing players or something or whatnot, you know, but they're they're coming out, they're finishing their plays, they're getting back up. You know, they're, they're showing that they still have heart at the end of the day, and they're the same old dub that they've been for many of years. Now, that won't change. No, no not at all. Here we are, broke the huddle, shotgun formation, four receivers to the left, looking deep downfield, caught his man, stepping and out of bounds. Joel Seal. Joel Seal, good 18-yard play on that one. Pass complete to Joel Seal. That's good for a Wanderers first down. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't try to target Joel more in this game. So what we'll see here as time is continuing to go down, I think we're going to see the Wanderers really try to get downfield. They, they want to score that one more. Hey, sometimes that, that one last touchdown is, is a win for them, right? You know, at this point, it's, it's a hard comeback, and it's probably not going to happen. So, hey, let's set a realistic goal, right? right? So we saw four receivers to the right, three to the left, and we ended up with a little bit of trickery in the backfield. 
looked like it was a late minute. Alex McDonald on the Late minute or late late second pitch. We'll see here there on the replay. Takes the ball. No, it's just a straight pitch. I thought that he had uh, set up maybe a play action to somebody underneath first. Yeah, he looked a little rushed there. Alex McDonald with the ball, trying to pick up some first down yardage. Unfortunately, he just got back to the line of scrimmage. But Cassidy is also one of the, probably the younger quarterbacks in the entire league. I believe it's only his second, maybe third year out of high school at the most. So he's he's still very young in a, in a, a grown man's league, I guess you could say. They're looking downfield, has his man, has a rollout. Nice first down yardage easily. Another another 10 yards beyond that even. Nice 20 yard play here. So as we see in the replay, takes the ball, fakes the, the handoff up the middle, rolls out to his left. 88, Cody Carr. And he's just, he's just looking to stay in bounds as long as possible, finally getting taken out right at center field. We're at the 55 yard line, almost exact. Yeah, hey, it's it's awesome. They're still coming out. They're still making plays. They're they're not losing. They're not losing control of themselves. Even though you know it's a very emotional game. You're in the championship. You you know you're gonna lose, but you know they're still coming out and playing. I bet you half these guys are laughing and having fun down there. Sure. So we got four receivers to the right, looking inside position on that number ten. Alex McDonald catches that. Still staying on his feet, trying to get some positive yards out of it. Yeah, I think forward progression should give him about five yards on that. Yeah, I'd say so too. He got he got thrown backwards, but Alex McDonald started off on the inside, finds that little soft spot right at the top of the five six yard line uh, zone. He's yeah, that, looking to try to get upfield on it. I got him about six or seven actually. We are going to be second and two, second and three. It looks like. Wanders come out, break their huddle. We got uh, three receivers left, two right. Each back to the right. High snap, takes it, look it over the top. 87 almost has it. Double covered. That could have been a little disastrous for Keith because he was just looking at the ball and he was being run down by two defenders from, from the Mustangs, as we see here. He's just looking downfield. He's got his man from the snap all the way. And how that wasn't worse, I'm not sure. But Israel held up, I think, a little bit at the end. Knew that Keith didn't have the ball in his hand. Uh, hit him because he was already committed to it. Yeah. But, you know, that, uh, th those are always iffy moments as, uh, for a receiver. Very. So we got uh, four receivers left, one right. I think we'll see. Oh, bad snap. Ends the ball off. Oh, nice little run to the right side. First down yardage easily. And again, that was Alex McDonald. Gets some extra yards out of that. He's playing with some heart here. So we see here, I think that was a design play. It was just a bad snap. Yeah. Immediately handed off. Counter step to the left. Comes hard to the right. The whole defense is on the, the right-hand side of the offense looking for uh, looking at all those receivers. So we, get, we end up with another first down play by the Wanderers. Some late-minute late, late minute, uh, excitement for them. We are... Sitting on the 36, 37 yard line. We've got three receivers right, two receivers left. H back to the right. Keeping the ball, rolling out to his left, looking downfield. He's got his man in his eyes, hands in, and he catches it. Forced out of bounds, down right around the 12, 13 yard line. Another first down for, for the Wanderers. Here they are. Hey, they're they're moving the ball. It's fourth quarter. You know, they they they're out of this game, but hey, they're still playing, and that's great. Yeah, that's great to see by anybody. And there's Seal, as as we've said before, yeah. and he's he's really coming alive here in the second half. Yeah. So Wanderers are knocking on the door. We are first and ten on the 23, 24 yard line. We've got a minute 55 counting. Let's see what Wanderers do. They may take a timeout just to give themselves a second to talk. Yep. Yeah. There they go. They're calling the timeout. Uh, obviously, it's a moral victory in this in, at this point for them to score a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the thing that they'll be able to regroup afterwards, talk as a group, and say, hey, listen, guys, maybe the game didn't go how we wanted to, but we were able to come together and, and put, put yeah, a Yeah, you put just got to look at the positives and take away what you can and take it into next season, you know? Like, uh, I, I don't expect the dub to just take this and boo-hoo about it. They're going to come back very upset next season. We see down on the sideline, we see the trophy, the McIntyre Cup, and we see the banner to be awarded. Yeah, I believe that's uh, actually Terry down on the field just a few feet away from the trophy. Yep. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Cameraman, for pointing that to us. 
And that, that trophy was actually bought and donated to the league by Terry back when this league started up. And yes. that's why it's called the McIntyre Cup, is because yes. he was kind enough to step forward when, when quite honestly, this league was, was played with four teams showing up at a field on a Saturday and seeing who could do what for 15 minutes. Anybody in New Brunswick that's involved in so, football knows who Terry McIntyre is. So here we are on the outside. Number 14 catches that ball, steps out of bounds. We're going to see the clock continue to go, unfortunately. That was Chad Alexander. That's not a name that we've called very often today. No. Let's see if they can get another player or two off. I'd like to think that they're going to get the touchdown here. So would I. I'd like to see that happen. Yeah, it would be nice. But Alexander had a nice little route there, got, got open, waited for the ball, stepped up field. Normally stepping out of bounds would stop the clock right now, but of course it, it's not right now. We are looking at two receivers right, three receivers left. Pre-snap motion, and he's looking for his man over the field. Lots of pressure from the Mustangs. He's going to keep the ball. He calls his own number, and he steps in. Touchdown. Touchdown. Good job on Cassidy. I think Cassidy deserves that. Yeah, he does. I mean, Very I'm, much. I'm sure he would have liked to pass it for a touchdown, give somebody else a chance to, to catch it for the touchdown. But here we see it's a broken play. Yeah. He's looking for his receivers. He's trying to find them downfield. Lots of pressure. Sees it, smells it. Decides to run, cuts back across the grain, puts that ball out, cold-shouldered right at the, <laughs> at the goal line. But, hey, once, you, once the ball crosses the plane, right, that's all that matters. Yeah. So we are seeing 14 seconds on the clock. It is counting down. This will be the final play of the game when they finally kick this ball and take an extra point. The referee is blown time in. So with this game in the books, good game, man. Uh, with this game in the books, that actually brings the Mustangs to a 23-game winning streak dating back to 2019. And after this win today, that actually ties the Mustangs with the Wanderers for eight MFL championships apiece. Very nice. A lot of history made today. A lot of history made today. I mean, this this was a good game. I mean, the, the score doesn't show up, 54-19. No, but no. The, the reality is, and I think people sitting at home and fans of football anywhere is understand that this was a good quality game. Uh, excellent skill, excellent ability, excellent sportsmanship. You know, that, it, it's what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, and it's nice to see two teams continue to, to come forward and, and play to the level that they have for so many years. Uh, when, when none of these guys are getting paid to come out here, they're all, they're all giving up their time this, on the summers. The, the coaching staffs are giving up their time year-round in order to get prepared for it. Uh, in many ways, it is being run as a professional league. So kudos to everybody that stepped on the field and played this season. Kudos to the guys that stepped on the field and, and played in the championship game. Yeah, from the, the Mustang side of it, you know, they Jason Terrace really did a lot in his offseason, did his homework. He got himself a full coaching staff. We actually went from five coaches up to 13. He uh, took a few courses and uh, educated himself and realized that, you know, run a, a football team all by yourself is a lot for one person. So we've actually, you know, up, upped our uh, game day personnel, our coaching staff, everything on all ends of the Mustangs organization like even myself i'm up here in the booth with you today but normally i'm down there on the field shaking hands in that lineup with the fellas on the field yeah it's it's a great time to be out there and and i'm, I'm so happy for jason terrace and the mustangs and the entire organization i'm happy for the, the wanderers as well uh and they'll keep coming back at it year after year after year yeah uh i mean a lot of a lot of congratulations go to the guys and not only the guys that are on the field but you know They've all got spouses at home or girlfriends yeah. at home and children. 100%. Family is them. huge. You know, so it's great to see everybody out here. And we got a great crowd for this game. Uh, I'm not sure what the official numbers is, but uh, a lot of people came out to watch the game. Uh, the attendance today was well over 400. I believe it was 425 people through the gate before halftime. So once again, the final score, 54-19 for the defending champion, the once again champion, the ongoing champion, Moncton Mustangs uh, and their organization. Uh, and the Wanderers, a hard-fought game today. Uh, all the best to all their fans at home watching this game. Uh, what we're going to see here at the middle of the field now is we're going to see both teams line up. They'll, fa they'll uh, stand across from each other. Uh, and witness the presentation of the of the banner and the cup. Uh, it's always it's always a bit of a drag to be the losing team standing there and watching this. But hey, some, at some point you'll be the winning team, and, it, and it's nice to have the you other know, team standing there with you. You know, back in 2018, the Wanderers actually upset the Mustangs at home here at Rocky Stone. 
Uh, the Wanderers beat the, the Mustangs 42-23 in 2018 to win the championship here at Rocky Stone. So a lot of excitement out there on the field, a lot of happiness. Um, Jason Terrace actually played last season. Yes, he did. Yes, he uh, came out of uh, retirement to play one more season. Yeah, Jason, I talked a couple of times when he was doing that. I, I wasn't sure what was wrong with him because I coached him when he was a kid, and I coached him again when he came out of high school. And then when I saw him playing in last year, I was like, what are you doing, man? I mean, come on. Well, you know but, what? Jason Terrace, he, uh, he lost quite a bit of weight and got himself into shape. And you know what? He, he made the team. He didn't just walk on there because he's the vice president or because he's the coach of the Mustangs. He actually had to earn his spot on that team out there. And you know what? He did it, and props to him. Props to everybody that earned a spot on their respectful teams this year. Absolutely. Not just every team allows people to come out and play. You actually have to try out and earn your position and work hard and train to play in this league. So here we see the presentation of... I suspect, well, I'm not sure what they're presenting. I guess it would be defensive MVP because that is Gabriel St. Germain, number 92. He's a defensive lineman for the Mustangs. So I'm sure we'll see the offensive player of the game. Any any bets on who it might be? I want to say Caleb Fogarty or Cam Morley. Okay. Then again, it could be Josh Hicks, one of the three. I'd like to think it's going to be a running back. Uh, Cam, or not Cam Morley, Caleb Fogarty won it last year. Tyler Ivany, number eight. No, oh, no. Two of them. Looks like they are joint winners. Oh wow, eight and eighty-four. So two of the three that, or two of the few that I named, Tyler Ivany and Josh, Josh Hicks. Hicks. Yeah, sometimes it's a little hard to say who is or who isn't the best, right? <laughs> so wow. congratulations to the offensive player of the game, defensive player of the game. Well, like I said, they gave uh, eighty-four that that nickname hashtag cheat code for a reason. Is it Bobby McIntyre? No, it's Patriot. Patriot get the offensive player of the game. Or player of the game. Or player of the game. Yeah, yeah. sorry, my bad. Yeah. yeah he, caught, he he controlled yeah, he, the game. Great game by him today, yes. And to only see Dan Comfort late in the game just showed how comfort or comfortable David was out there today. Yeah. Because like I said, all season, Dan Comfort was the starter for the Mustangs, and that, that, that meant nothing today. So the captains are coming forward. They will receive the uh, trophy. They will receive the banner, once again celebrating the, the championship. Yeah, you see, yeah. you see the, the captains all gathered there. You got number one, Zach Cormier. Number 52, Jarek McWilliams. You got number six, Bobby McIntyre. You got number 92, J Gabriel St. Germain. Number 45, Denis, the Pride of Skadook, the Wehran. And number 84, Josh Hicks. Congratulations to Mustangs, all their family, all their fans, and everybody that enjoys the game of football. Hey, it, it was a lot of work put in, you know, like uh, I'm off field and photographer for the Mustangs and we put our, our fair share of work in, whether it's Tuesday night, Thursday night, or Saturdays when we do our game day. Even on Sundays when it's time to do a team load of laundry. You ever wash 50, <laughs> 50 jerseys and 50 pairs of pants? So once again, we want to thank everybody for tuning in today to watch the Rogers TV coverage. We appreciate Rogers showing the, uh, the sports from local and around the, the region. Final score 54 for the Moncton Mustangs over the visiting 19 points for the visiting uh, St. John Wanderers in the Maritime Football League final for 2022. Way to go. Congratulations. And thank you for viewing and tuning in.